Hey, if you're watching this video, then chances are you're probably not subscribed. We are less than 500 subs away from the big 10,000. So if you enjoyed today's podcast or you've enjoyed any of our previous episodes, make sure you drop the sub. And without any further ado, enjoy today's episode. Welcome to the OSR's podcast where we talk about RuneScape. I'm one of your hosts, Mimek Yao, followed by... What's going on, boys? Rakes as always. Hey, uh, race cup again. So today we are blessed with not just one, but two PvP gods in the community right now. We have Dino and we have West Ham. How are you doing, boys? Fucking hell, we're not even mortals anymore. We're a god now, apparently. <laughs> I was going to say, I like that introduction. I'll go for that. Hey, <laughs> listen, I, I'm going to be honest, man. We couldn't get skill specs to come on, so, you know, you guys were runners up, but... <laughs> We'll take what we can get. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you guys can imagine, today we're going to be doing pretty much 100% PvP talk. That's why we have these guys on. These guys do PvP in and out all day long. So um, before we get into the podcast, I think for the new viewers that are watching, it'd be a decent idea if we do a general background on like our PvP experience and you know how long we've PK'd for and so forth. So does anybody like to begin? Dino? <laughs> yeah, I want to know no. Dino's experience, bro. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I started, I pretty much PK since I played the game. So from about 2005, um, obviously back then it was like free to play. I, I would, I would be like fire striking or whatever, you know, of rock multi ditch back when times were a lot simpler. Oh, uh, um, yes, sir. It was great. <laughs> and it's literally just progressed from there. Um, done, been in teams, been solo, uh, quit for a, about a year when EOC came out, um, and then when Old School come, uh, obviously back, um, I got back involved again, uh, again with the team side of the game, and then sort of stopped in 2017 when I started streaming, and then done more like community-based uh, stuff. Um, but yeah, sort of, sort of done it all. Sort of done it all. Well, I like to think I've done it all anyway, but... Nice. Nice, nice, nice. What about you, West Ham? Uh, I've been playing the game since like 2007 when I was in like primary school and my main interest almost immediately was like PvP. That's that's what my brother wanted to do, that's what I wanted to do, that's what all my friends wanted to do. So I think we started off by making these like fire strike twins yes, where like sir. people would PK mm. at like the hollow tree. That's uh, a correlation. Just, like, just by multi and then like it kind of just went on from there. And since then, I mean... In, since like old school's release, I was partially in single teams. I led a single team for about five years, which I know many people don't really oh, like. What was the name? But uh, yeah, I led Canini for a couple of years. Canini. And then, huh. yeah, so that used to mean to grab it in Finnish and Swedish. It's it's like a mix match up of both of the words. Okay. But um, regardless, <clears throat> I. Uh, I then moved on to content creation, which was a bit more like solo PKM focused. I've been solo PKM for years. It's just like I never really streamed it. So I began like streaming on Twitch in 2017 and moved from there. Sick. Nice. Um, so my background with PvP, uh, I'm a bit of a washed up PvPer now. I don't really do too much. I do LMS quite frequently, but in terms of actually stepping into the wieldy, like, it's only really when I go with Mint, and we kind of just mess around and end up killing each other, so that's fun. Uh, um, you say killing each other. <laughs> well, listen, you're you, like one. You've killed me <laughs> once, dude. You killed me once, bro. That's all I, I need! Hey, I won on the PvP tracker, so that's all that matters, man. You know, just saying. I wasn't RNG even using Runelite. I was on Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was good um, it. So, yeah, I, I used to do a lot of PKing content, um... Pretty much the same for me as soon as I started playing in the early 2000s, probably like 2004. Uh, the only thing I did was PvP. And I transferred to doing PvM stuff in, God, I want to say about five years ago, when I could see that PvP was kind of like on a downward trajectory, where there was just a lack of updates and I wanted to make content and I just didn't see it as a viable route of making content. Um, but yeah, I, I did a lot of stuff. I did single clans mainly. I did a little bit of multi-clanning um, and it was a lot of like deep building, mage bank hybriding and stuff like that. So that's my background with it. Nice, man. Uh, Rise, do you want to you wanna go, dude? No, save save, the, best last, <laughs> <laughs> save the best okay. for last. Save the best for last. I am I am partially curious if we all met each other at the Varrock multi-ditch back in the day, dude, because 
it feels like such a <laughs> such a memory, man, that not a lot of people have. But apparently every PKer has this memory of going to the F2P worlds, picking up Adam and Arrows, dumping them, and then buying fire strikes. You know, I wonder if we've we've popped each other, man. It's man. possible. Dude, it, I it was an interesting era for sure. Like it, it was, uh, I, I don't know what one of the biggest things was just like twins, right? That that was like the main oh, yeah. thing. Oh, like, yeah. what, like Varrock Multi was making Dark Boy oh. twins, DDS twins, whatever it could be. You would put like XX and then underscore some stupid shit and then XX and you would make a twin out of that. Dude, like one of the <laughs> best things about uh, Varrock Morty, I love this, and I, I wish that they kept it in the game. If it was in the game today, it would spice up PKing, where like the damage from a spell or an arrow would still carry on when you got into the safe zone. So some dudes would end up like getting all the way to the guards, and then they'd get hit by like a fire strike and die. <laughs> and, and it was the same for the Mage Bank Cleaver back in the day. If somebody pulled it and you specced them, that damage would go through on the other side. I, I really mm. wish that was still in the game. That'd be so oh, cool. Speaking of that, this is such a specific memory, but you might be the only person that know. You remember I Control's Eye when he was at V-Square, I think, and he tellied as he was getting uh, clawed out, and he had like a white P-hat, uh, like AGS oh, and full status, and he just dies the second he reaches Lumbridge, because the damage just transferred over. So if you tabbed, someone could just stack you out while you're like... Spe- uh, while you teleported or whatever. Oh, man. I remember I remember that now, running away and just having a fire strike chase you and thinking you could outrun it, but you never could, and you know it was all over. <laughs> Dude, I remember when someone would die at the, the multi-ditch, and they'd go to loot, and then nine or at least 12 people stood out, and you just saw one singular fire strike dome this person, bro. <laughs> and sometimes it'd be me, because i go second trying to loot, like, some strikes, and, yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be hit right on out, but... Uh, the rest of my PvP experience, dude, I was oh, like, if you guys didn't bring that up, I would have forgot because I that was that was my PvP experience, and then I got like one kill with a mage bow against the guy for Rune Crossbow, and I got like seventy k, and I was so happy, and that was it. And then old school came back out. I was an Iron Man. I wanted to kill bots. Viewers loved it, and then it just kind of evolved into thirty thousand deep wilderness PKs, all PVMers, of course, you know, all PVMers, <laughs> and. uh Never joined a clan, but they all know about me, and uh, I make videos, and people somehow watch them, man. So that's honestly the history of Minty right there. Damn, okay, okay. Well, you got all right, well, my, my PvP experience, it's very limited, I'm not going to lie. But, like, I remember free to play, I was watching the people do the fire strikes in, in you know, north of Varak, right? It was a very spooky place, so I never actually stepped across that because I didn't want to die, you know? I had, like, my 1,000 GP... I needed to invest and not lose it. But I, I remember that era. I was there, you know, I played like 2005 free to play for a while. And uh, I, I think I started doing like some actual kind of like PvP a little bit, just a little bit, because my friend was like, yeah, let's go kill some Rune Knight or Miners or something. So, you know, I did a little bit of that. And then like I did some Castle Wars and some Clan Wars back when like, you know, there would just be a, tons of noobs, you know, I'd be like 100, level 100, they'd be like level 70 or whatever, you know, just bully them. Right, no skill whatsoever. You just you just poke them with your weapon and they died. All right, so there there was a bit of that, and then most recently I tried out some uh, last man standing, oh. so I can get a rune pouch on, on one of my hardcore group environments, and um, you know surprisingly I, I I did okay. Like I actually won a few matches uh, during the whole rune pouch thing. So you know I guess maybe I have some talent in there. Who knows? But Dude, man, have you seen yourself? Much my boss? I experience. hope <laughs> that's about it. But yeah, I'm mostly PVM though. I'm like 99.9% like PVM skilling, so. Well, you yeah, know. Rice, you did go out with me and Rakesy one time. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, we did a little bit of that. I lost the AGS because I forgot to protect item. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was I, best, I was like, man. what the heck? I forgot about that stupid prayer. I don't use it, like, rarely. That was so good, that's man. About it. Oh, that's gosh. About it. I'm so glad. It was, one of, my, it was one of my viewers who PK'd it, too, and he was so proud. of like, why would you do my boy Rice like that? And he's like, well, he didn't even get smited. I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Do, do you know what yeah. this uh, the whole Just fire striking in multi in Varrock <laughs> reminds me of? Um, when I when I think of Deadman mode, like Deadman mode is so hype. When it, like the first hour of Deadman mode and like the first day is usually like really good in the first few days, but like 
I think the reason why people love it so much is, like, everybody... It literally is like Varrock Multi. Everyone's running for their 10k from the Stronghold. It's like, if you're smart, you're, like, using all of your beginner runes on all the monsters as you run through. And then if you're if you're really good, like, by the end of it, you kill somebody who's got the 10k, and then you run to Mage Bank and grab some more runes and stuff. Like, oh, this is giving me... Yeah. This is taking me back. I want Deathman Mode, man. I miss yeah, it. Yeah, I think... I think DMM brought back like some memories for people or like brought back the nostalgia of everyone being on like an even playing field uh at least for the first few hours or like days obviously at the end people started gaining a gap but uh I, yeah I, I don't know i just think dmm had its charm in the beginning where like people didn't really know what to do that that's one of the very rare things that don't really happen in runescape where people don't know what to do nothing's been solved yet i feel like these days because of how much Jag like information Jagex puts out, most things are solved before they even come out. Yeah. True. We're so freaking we're just so old, I guess. I like the first time. It was really fun to watch people do it because then nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah, it was great. I mean the <laughs> idea of them like putting out a different map for Dem mode so people would be just completely lost would be amazing. But at the same time, that's probably just a, a dream, right? That's never gonna happen. Put down with yeah. Dead Man mode. No, no, never. Yeah, I mean, here, here's a question for uh, the two of you because I'm I'm pretty sure you both did Dead Man mode. I'd be surprised if you didn't. But um, what did you think of the last one with uh the um what were they called? Was it relics or runes or something? The uh, like relics special are... was it relics? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What did, what did you guys think of that one? What were your thoughts on that? Um, it was. It was good that they tried something different because I think it was getting very stale towards the end when you know they do it every, like, every three months. Um, yep. Towards the sort of end of that, everyone was having it sussed and it was just the same thing. Um, so it was worth well a try changing it. I wasn't that keen on the relics personally. Um, I thought that was a bit too overpowered, at least at the beginning, when aggression and that wasn't. Well, I think was it, was it called aggression when like yeah. you could VLS like nineties or something. Um, or hundreds yeah, even. Nineties <laughs> is an understatement, yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I personally don't like the game changes like that, but I can see what they were doing. Some of them were okay, like the, uh, was it Menacing Mage, where it done like 12 damage and healed you, and it just like, added a bit of damage. I like that sort of stuff, but yeah. I feel like some of them were a bit too strong, uh, personally anyway. And the anti-freeze sigil, that made my life hell streaming it, oh. because teams would just come, and they would pass you, and you'd freeze them, and then they could just move <laughs> again. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Yeah, I, I think I was a big 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 fan of the sigils i was very sad that i didn't move straight to the 126 bracket when i uh like when i played dmm because i waited until like the last two days i think uh i can't ex exactly remember what happened but there was some I, I waited quite long before i moved to the 126 uh, bracket and when i went in there i went like full on like i put aggression on rampage all of the like damage boosting things and I could hit, like, 116 AGSs in the most basic gear. I thought that shit was fun as fuck. I, I love seeing big numbers, so... For me, personally, it, it was fun. Yeah. I, yeah. I think... I, 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 agree with, I agree with Dino on this one, man. I, I think that it was a good try. Um, you know, I wouldn't even mind if they kept uh, the other relics. Basically, non non-combat relics, I think that they're a very good addition, because... You know, if it's going to speed up that tedious stuff, which, you know, let's be honest, not many people enjoy doing, like, hey, more power to you. But, yeah, I, I can understand why it would be fun one-shotting people, but being on the other end of that VLS and getting one shot mm -hmm. for your week's progress, which happened to me, I, w <laughs> I was just like, I'm not enjoying this, man. Like, I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm not going to rebuild solo without taking donos. And, like, it just, yeah, it just wasn't for me. Dude, yeah. Speaking of solo... When he got your ass while you're doing one small favor, <laughs> I think that was my favorite part. He was, oh. I don't know if you guys watched a solo mission at the time. He was DH bombing in the one small favor cave. And Rakes, he at the time was just about to get into that part. And what did he hit on you, man? I think he took you out one day, uh, right? I think it was 116 he hit me for. <laughs> but the thing is, he, he, dude, I was streaming at the time. So I was, this was when they had the free life system. And it's like, if you, like, a death was quite, you know, quite punishing. And I literally died, right click, saw it was Soto Mission, I was like, this motherfucker just stream sniped me. And I was like really pissed off, man. Because it like meant a lot. And apparently he was going for somebody else. 
He didn't even know that I was there. Like, he wasn't watching the stream or anything. It was just bad timing. But he, he did get my stuff back. I see your face, back. bro. Dude, your face. It was like he betrayed you on the highest level of friendship. And I was just like... <laughs> I yeah, almost man. felt rage until I realized it was Rain. I was like, oh, that's really fucked. Thank God that wasn't me. Oh, man. Yeah, he, he, get, he did give my stuff back, so I mean, you know. That's good, dude. Yeah. Uh, one of the oh, things okay. I, I liked about Dead End Mode this time was the bracketed worlds, because I always thought West Ham was on the max level world, and that's why I never went to that world. I thought that man was just roaming, dude, because I, I stayed the whole time in the first bracket. I was such a <laughs> pussy. But it worked out. I got some decent PKs. I got the hideaway from West Ham. I don't know where Dino was, but I was probably hiding from his, his ass, too, dude. And fucking, what were you wearing, Dino, back then? I was hiding in the middle bracket, so I was... Uh, no, to be fair, I'd done um, some of... Was it the 3 to 35 bracket, yeah? Uh, it was 3 to 60, wasn't it? Or something? Was or was it, for, it, 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 it was, was 3 there was to 35, and then there was, like, yeah. 35 to 71, and 71 to 100, and then uh, 100 to 126. Yeah, I stayed, like, yeah. right around that 60-ish combat, I believe, for most of it. I was terrified. Uh, no, I, I stayed at, like, the 34 for, with a lot of my community, and it was actually strangely active and, like, multi, because everyone would just have, like, 50 range accounts, and they wouldn't really care if they died. So, like, it would be fun <laughs> fight. Um, <laughs> and, again, I, I prefer that sort of stuff to, like, getting destroyed by West Ham, you know, with a 116 at Edge Bank. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, no, when, when I was streaming, I was on the, the one below. So I think, what was it, 70 to 100? I think it was. Something like that. And um, that was sort of the bracket I stayed in. Yeah, I think my experience was a bit different to Dino's as well, just because I wasn't streaming. So during that DMM, I decided that I'm going to go a bit more YouTube focused and trying to get like, I don't know, the, like get the, uh, the people in Max and like the teams and stuff like that. And uh, I mean, with with good success as well. It was just I didn't stream it, so I didn't really get the whole people stream sniping me and hunting me as soon as I left the bank and stuff like that. Yeah, it's the best part. It was bad this time. <laughs> as soon as I left a bank, like I said there would be a team of about five, and if they got last hit, they could pass you. And yeah, with them sigils, you had to to escape. You had to get two back to back freezes on the same person, like the, at the perfect time. Because if you messed up one thing, you were gone. Um, obviously, Jagex added the unfreeze sigil. I assume to try and help people escape, but I think they forget that teams then get access to that. And yeah. it ends up being ten times worse for the person trying to escape. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny because most of these things, even like the the unfreeze potion that they originally wanted for the <laughs> PvP arena poll, it, it, it was like, oh yeah, this will help people escape. And uh, then like all the PvPers come in and they're like, this is just going to make us even stronger. I don't know why you're smoking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for real. It feels like a lot of the JMOs they have good intentions, but they just don't PK, so when it comes to these updates, you're like, why, why are these in the game? Why can't we hit over 100? I mean, why are any of these in the... It feels like just a basic foundation understanding of PvP would really just get rid of most of, of what they try to put in the game. I mean... We, yeah, we, I mean, I think they... I think they add stuff like the unfreeze potion and whatnot because PVMers uh, have been asking for stuff like that for quite some time. Uh, I've mm. seen suggestions about that because people think escaping is like too hard at this stage, right, with all the good gear in the game. But what? you also have to keep in mind, yeah. no matter no matter what, even if you're going to give a, like PVMers a potion like that, that also means everyone else has it. So if yeah. someone wants to escape you, then you can also use it. There's no stopping that. I don't know, man. I, you know, well, I can understand why PVMers would say it's hard to escape, but bro, you got, you got bulwarks. It's like you got it's mage really defense and stuff like carols and whatnot. It's so hard to freeze. And it, like, not to mention, it's like, if you just stand there praying mage the whole time or melee or one prayer, you're probably going to get destroyed. But if you actually look at your opponent, the person who's attacking you, and then like predict what they're about to attack you with, you, you'll be amazed how much food you you end up saving from doing that, you know? Uh, I think it goes both ways, man. Like, I watched, um, I think it was Skill Specs yesterday, trying to kill some guy at Rev Caves who had a bulwark, and the man prayed rain, uh, sorry, mage the entire time, and, like, Skill Specs literally didn't hit him. Like, he did mm -hmm. not hit this man. And I, I was just watching it, I was like, oh my god, that is just, like, the most brain-dead thing I'm watching right now. That cannot be fun. Like, just to be fighting against that all the time, like... Absolutely insane. Yeah. 
I, I was going to say, you're like, wait, they can totally protect with one prayer and still live most of the time. What are you talking? Yeah. That's like their number one strat. One <laughs> prayer, hands on the keyboard, they're going to make you feel bad, bro. That is their strat. And it works yeah, most the, times. The PVM is they just put a dins on, they're in double black dehyde, can't pray mage, and then they just flame you as they're running down, and you just feel so, like, attacked. Because you really want to get them, but you just can't touch them. You're doing everything right, but you're just hitting zeros. and. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, can't out, you can't outplay it, bro. And then when they got these, thank God they changed the entrance, even though it's still wonky. You know, the Scooby-Doo kind of, you go in, you go out. That is wonky. It's, a, like, in my opinion, just a little better than what we had last time. But I swear, like, it is so easy for people to escape. Not even with just a bulwark, but the agility shortcuts. You jump over, you wait, you jump back over. You got PID, <laughs> you got ping, you got fucking Wi-Fi routers connected to Walmart. It's all around just the worst experience and yet they're like it's so hard to live yeah. what? <laughs> I, think, but, I think that but, also came as like a problem from the fact that like they rev caves was designed to be a multi-way combat area which it, it did work for multi like the agility shortcuts and stuff isn't really that overpowered if you have multiple people that's like that can attack you at the same time but when you just flip a switch and you do, like, you flip it from multi to single and you don't change anything about the layout of the cave, there's some problems that are going to be, mm-hmm. like, had. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's a really that, good point, that, man. That. Sorry, go right so, through. for you guys, uh, I'm speaking Mint, Dino, West Ham, like, you guys, your content is PvP. Um, like, in the wilderness, would you guys say that the Rev Cave is more or less, like, the only place that you guys can get content? Or like, how how is it at this point? Um, it's... so you go, you as well. Uh, I was just gonna say, Rev Cave is like the most active one, but since the like the new PJ timer that got added, I think Alter is like an alternative, and LMS World Ferox Enclave is also active. But th- yeah, th- there's not many spots you can hop anymore. To be honest, it is mostly just Rev Cave. I'm guessing yeah. that's for the uh, the 100k entry fee as well. That helps for sure, right? Is I, that still a I thing? That is mm-hmm. still a thing, yeah. Is, I wouldn't yeah. say that really helps now, though. Maybe for like some of the guys that are just hunting PVMers, um, because obviously it adds 100k to their, what, 500k loot, and then... <laughs> um, <laughs> but I would say most of the PKers just go there because they know that's where they're going to find action. Um, because I, I've never really liked the caves, but I've been there for about the last year and a half because I know it's the only spot. Um, yeah. I like Casper's said, obviously, Ulta is a bit more active now with the PG time up, but you can still hop there for hours sometimes and find nothing. And stuff like Mage Bank isn't even worth trying. Um, I've tried it a few times, or Laren's Chest and Resource Arena, and you might find one, like, naked man for, like, uh, five hours. That's, uh, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> That's a sad <laughs> truth, man. I, I've lived in the Rev Cave since it was multi, and then even then, like, two years of just multi-revs, right? Because back then, people forget, no, there was an update still, right? It was just more active because there was good money at revs, and then the altar was fairly new. Lava Dragons, honestly, I don't know what the fuck's going on there. Callisto, semi-decent. Chaos, Ellie, always camped by that one clan. I don't know why the fuck they like that <laughs> area, but they are just always at the Chaos, Ellie. That's their shit. They're making zero money, so... <laughs> Even back in the day, it wasn't even active. We just had multi-revs. And the best part was, you'd be like, hey, you want to grab a dark bone? Just click on one dude and I don't have a beer. And it would work. And right now, there is no area in the wild where you could coordinate that. Possibly Callisto, unless you're going to get hit by an 80 to 90 man clan. Which you wonder, really? 80 to 90 man? No, maybe like 40 to 50. But they can call 90 if they want to. And they will for no reason. All right, these people are bored on Discord. All right? Hey, 302, show up. Holy shit, it's World 2 out here, bro. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, I was a massive fan of Morty Revs. I was uh, really sad, because that was what my content was. Before they took it, it was always multi content with, like, the community. We'd just go multi, and um, there was obviously issues there, which is a whole other can of worms. But multi Revs seemed to work, um, for the most part. Uh, so it's kind, of, it's kind of a shame that they sort of swapped it. And even yeah. now with Revs, I don't know what West Ham would say, but it's not really... Like, it's active, but it's not active compared to what it used to be. No, like, no it, it, it's not. Like, we say active because we're deprived, but it's, yeah. not, actually, it's not actually active. Hopping, hopping for two hours and finding, like, one or two fights 
by any like if you go back any era, it would be, be considered dead. Yeah, yeah. But, like even I, for myself, I've switched my time zone at this point so that I'm waking up for like the American time zone, so I can go live and actually find people. Because the GMT time zone is just not active at all. Like, there's nothing for me to do. I just hop for five hours and then end stream. Mm-hmm. Damn. <laughs> nice talk to you. Oh, yeah. oh, hey, uh, about the the whole refs thing. I, I think we talked about it a little bit. Like, you said, you know, the whole design, right? It's like the the layout's no good for what what it is right now. Like, mm-hmm. and 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 the, I don't know why they changed it. Right? Obviously, it's because like it was it was at one point only that one room that had like thirty revs and it was always multi. Like, you know, you know what they could have done, uh, and I I feel like they could still do it. Is that the rev case is huge. They could just redesign it so that like one part is multi and another part is just singles. So that yeah, the people absolutely. that just want to kill revs by themselves can do that. And the people that want to, you know, do the clan stuff can do that, right? Like, why not both? You know, I don't understand. Like, it's, it's really that simple in my opinion, but they, I think, but yeah, they didn't do it. I think even it, the like, people that do PK and single, like me and Dino included, we both want multi revs back. Even, even if we don't like do it, we still want it back because it was good for the wilderness and, Currently, like, they, they've already deployed the fixes that would stop everything from happening in the same way it did in the old revs. So, what's the problem in adding it no, back? You're 100% right. And for the viewers who don't understand, like, the whole wilderness timeline, trust me, you know, you shouldn't, it's right? Unless weird. you're super obsessed. <laughs> it's confusing. But back when revs was multi, they would have protect clans, right? Because people all get, always go, oh, dude, you're in a clan. Why don't you guys fight other clans? No, 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 no. Clans, clans don't fight other clans. Clans go, hey, Hey, you want to start a fucking business on RuneScape? And then they yep. go with other dis- discords and be like, oh, you want to? So they started a mass multi business, multiple discords full, and they would all protect certain worlds, right? And they would break it down to certain pings, payments. I mean, it was crazy, right? To the point where if you got to a world, you knew it was locked down. You know, when you see so many crossbowers. It was locked down, dude. <laughs> kinda, kinda. It wasn't even that bad. I gotta say, it was still like, um, doable, right? It, it didn't really need to, to go, but every world is locked down. You see a world of crossbows, you're like, this is protected, right? You can't just have a crossbow out. This is for sure they're making money. And um, they said, no, we can't have people doing literally this big business, farming gold, locking shit down, just making I don't even know how much off it. Nevertheless, locking it down and getting loot from people actually try to PK. You know, or if they're ancient macing, which is where they knock your prayer down to zero instantly, which is still a thing in RuneScape. That is still very common to this day, usually followed by lures or baits. So very healthy for the game. But yeah, so, and now uh, it's single. That's what, the whole lore. What do you guys think with the changes they've made now would make it a good time or safe for them to reintroduce Morty in some point of the cave? Like, what is the change for you that has made it acceptable now? All they had to do, uh, in my opinion, because the issue, the issue it was, was it wasn't the clans, well, people weren't scared of the clans. Like, clans will always contest other clans if there's loot involved. Uh, what the protection clans were doing is, I've had it on stream, they would get about 80 to 100 people, one item, Crystal Halley. Um, so you kill them, you get nothing. And they don't mind dying, they bring no food. They literally just have a Crystal Halley, and then they just teleport back up. And I mean, they do it for 48 hours a time, until you leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Um, All they had to do, in my opinion, for Fix the Caves, was to add the entrance fee. If you were killing the protectors for money, clans would have contested that. And then the whole protection thing wouldn't have been anywhere near as much of an issue. Mm -hmm. Um, It was just the rag. The rag is what killed it. Like, I remember I hit the wrong world once, and my stream got ragged for the next month. Like every day, I like oh these crystal God. hallies and crystal bows. Um, they, they're relentless. They only have time, really. That's all they have yeah. is time. Because the it, more they play RuneScape, the more they make. So it's just yeah. The thing is, all my lot were up for a fight, but obviously they didn't want to waste their time getting zero GP. If all of them risked two hundred k, we would be for it because we're making money, and then it would encourage them to gear up because they would then not want to lose two hundred k all the time. So they would then get in good gear, and it would create like healthy fights again. Yeah, um, and it would actually be yeah. fun for both of you, but I guess it depends on your perspective of fun. For sure. Yeah. Like West Ham said, they already had all the things implemented that would have already made this uh, doable for multi. And I've, I've talked about having like an area where they got singles, and then at the bottom of the cave, you take a ladder down, they got multi. And in, in order to go down there to, to enjoy multi revs, you would need to pay two to 300k, and there would be a limit. Like if you die, you could just go right back in, right? There'd be like a five-minute delay. 
Because like Dino said, it would be ragging, and then they'd come back. But if clans could farm these raggers for 300k each repeatedly without them coming back, they could just go out, farm, and all of a sudden you got yourself a new clan, maybe even an honorable clan that's somehow fighting off the naked people, right? But <laughs> like the they already invasion. have all they would have the time limit, and we got ourselves multi reps back. It's seriously. It's yeah, uh, GP, GP is like the biggest incentive. Like incentivizer when it comes to the wilderness. If, wherever there's GP to be made, there's always going to be teams or groups of people, and you cannot stop that. But if there's stuff to be lost or money to be made, I mean, you can't just brag it all the time because you will lose money on doing that. But that that's kind of the problem with old reps. Like Dino said, you just get one item all the time. And then you also have, like, diary gear, which is completely free that you can just rock up in 24-7, no, no cost <laughs> at all. It's fucking worse, bro. Why has it got magic defense? Out of every defense to add... Already cloak. <laughs> don't fucking add magic defense to free things. Stop. Please. Get help. Even the actual clans now, it's like you say, they... To, to make clans active again, they just need something that requires every member in there to risk a minimum amount. 100k, 200k, 500k. Um, even when clans start a fight now, one of my mates is in, like, a multi-clan. I won't say which one, but they have about... He showed me some of their bank tabs, and they have like over a hundred thousand pairs of studded chaps and <laughs> mithril kite shields. And they never like they they just go there to try and piss the other clan off the most. No one's actually looking for a fight. Um, whereas if they all risk five hundred k, they would gear up because they didn't want to lose their five hundred k. It's but I think Jagex are just against doing any. I don't know. They seem like they're against doing anything like that for Moti. What what do you think? Moment. What do you think the clans have resulted to doing that? Like what what do you think is the mindset of one of those people that are there risking, like, 2K and just ruining people's time. I, I would say stuff just got a lot more, like... Well, we've all got older, and I'm I'm sure West Ham will agree in terms of, like, singles clans. Stuff sort of got, like, very personal, and these people actually started hating each other. Like, the leaders mm -hmm. hate each other. <laughs> like, actual IRL and everything. So they will just do anything to piss the others off. Um, even if it means them. So, I remember there was a rag war at GDZ that went on for, like, two weeks once. Oh and God. they just kept returning in one item. <laughs> and one of my mates done like a three-day shift, they were calling them. And it's just like, why are you doing that? And it's just to try and prove a point. Like, it's stubborn, it's, man. If you were so yeah. stubborn. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just a mentality that's bred, right? Because hey. you got these toxic people, and they'll get kicked out of one Discord. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah, join our clan. We need more people. And then you'll see their real personality. And then all of a sudden, everyone's got a little bit of that, and it turns into a lot of bit of that, because next thing you know, you're having a rag war that lasts yeah, like, two you, weeks. You know, you know what's crazy about this? Like, we're, we're, we're going to talk about the Pulse stuff pretty soon. I think we will, because like, this leads to a good point, right? But, like, uh, you know, first of all, there's there's a dynamic where the people that play the game just to train their accounts and build their accounts and not PK, they, they have a thing against the PKers because, you know, every time they, they go to wilderness and they die to somebody... There's a decent chance someone might talk shit, and then they're like, "All right, I'm voting no to people all the time." Mm -hmm. But then there's also the different dramas between the actual PKers and like their clans. I guess that that happens, right? But yeah, but we're yeah we're we're leading to like the whole polling thing soon. Um, but like it's it's crazy because there's so I mean especially with revs like the solution to fixing it is so simple, and it's like it's literally brain dead simple, you know. Right, you just have singles in a, in a multi area, and that's they literally that boom. Right, you satisfy everybody. The PVMers, you know, they don't have to deal with like the whole protection clan thing, the whole multi, you know, multi getting one bang in one, you know, one shot thing. And then like the clans can do the clan thing with like the one GK board. Like it's so simple. Everybody gets a bit of everything. Everyone's happy. Like I, I think. Oh, sorry, sorry. One more thing. I think the issue, you know, right, is is like that that makes things so hard for. For anything to get started, it's just like people are kind of, yeah, they've developed this whole like weird rivalry. Like it's like weird. So like immature rivalry where, where if, if we just work together and get this thing solved, there wouldn't be so much issues with all this nonsense, you know, like, yeah. like let's just solve it. it it's so easy. Do, do you, you think know? it's like a, is it like, um, is it like an egotistical thing? Do you think like, cause oh, yeah. back when I was in clans, yeah. it was, it was all ego. Like, the leaders that didn't like other clans. It was... If you were in a clan, a single clan back when I was, it was like, even if you fucking lost the, the fight that you had, and this was back when you used to have run-ins that were amazing. I used to love run-ins. But, like, even if you lost, like, five hybrids and two tanks, 
and you killed none of their team, there was an excuse for every single death. It was like, <laughs> nah, that didn't count, that didn't count. It was just, it was so egotistical. It was insane. But like, yeah, I, I guess... A, a, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, man. God. No, I, I was just going to say, as a person that led a team like couple, a couple years after your era, yes, it, it is essentially exactly the same there, there would always be an excuse even from our side like i i would sit there <laughs> making up these dumb excuses to why they won and we didn't or like e- even you don't even have to say you lost you would just portray it in a different light acting like you Mate, won dude, <laughs> dude, like dude, politics I, bro I, i'll never forget yeah. this one time i was in this clan and no, no i was yeah i was in a clan and uh we killed one of their like best hybrids and it was like a big deal because as soon as you killed one of their hybrids this was back in the IRC days. You go into fucking Swift Switch or whatever it was called, the IRC. You join their like hashtag team, whatever it was, <laughs> and you would spam the picture of the kill. Bro, like, I'm not kidding. We killed this guy. Within two minutes, they sent us a picture of his death perspective, and they had edited a disconnect onto the picture. <laughs> and, and it was completely like out of frame. And it was just like, oh my fuck. Like, they're faking DCs. Like, it was just nuts. <laughs> They were I just mean, panicking, like, quick, throw something up there, there's got to be a reason. Get our, get our editor, we need him. Uh... Editor-in-chief, quick. But no, it's, oh it's always okay. been like that, I guess, isn't it? I think, yeah. um, you know, this conversation, yeah, like, it kind of makes me think, like, there should be an area in the wilderness which is actually made for those clans to rag each other, and then they should just, like, focus on really good areas where you have to, like, risk something in order to be there to prevent those people from coming to those places. Like, just have, like, a cesspool somewhere in the wildy where they're incentivized <laughs> to do that to one another, but leave everyone else alone. Like, that would be cool. have, like, have, like, a pit that's a cheap teleport. They can get back there straight away and just yeah. leave them in there. And then you say, like, <laughs> like All you see are red bars, oh, yeah. All you see... Yeah. Oh, my God. But people are going to watch. Yeah, for real. Um... <laughs> I have an idea, though, like, if you guys ever played New World, so they don't really have clans, they have, like, three factions. And then these factions compete for areas in, the, in not the wild, but in the map. And I'm wondering, like, if we do fix Rev Caves, bring it back, put a limit on it, um, you know, obviously boost the money, make a multi, and then also on top of that, add in, like, not a, it's hard to say, a faction-ish system where there's maybe three clans to choose from, and you guys can fight for points in different areas of the map or whatever ranking system, and, and actually, I don't know, hype people up, get them in your clan, be like, oh, I'm going to train you, I'm going to help you. Because when you play New World and you join a clan, you can be in voice chat, be like, yeah, let's run some quests. Let's run some. You join a clan in RuneScape, like, all right, go put on a, a fucking painted rune kite. We're about to go spam this dude, okay? There is nothing good going on that helps the game whatsoever. And they can have their fun, but isn't it better for all of us if there's actually something, I don't know, to look forward to in the wild, man? Maybe these clans need, like, a greater purpose, and nothing, nothing is presented. And now they all all are egotistic Discord maniacs, bro. Maybe we need to guide them. Yeah, I feel like something. fixing revs would be a good start, right? And then like, oh, for sure. Like, it just need we need to create a better balance, you know, between like how players interact with each other. Because like, the, you know, the wilderness is currently set up in a way where no matter what, it's just people will hate each other because they are kind of forced to do that one thing to, that is in PvP, and then the PvPers like they gotta kill somebody. And then I, it's like, you know, this whole dude, dynamic makes it really difficult. I, I, I think it's... But it could be lessened. It could be lessened, though. Yeah, especially at revs. don't even want it, either. Like, I, I don't... I don't think me and Dino care if, like, <laughs> the dragon pickaxe is obtainable in the wilderness or not. Like, it's just one of those things that... Nah. ...divide the community so much. And yeah. no matter how you do it, it's like, I'm gonna attack someone in the wilderness, even if you have nothing on you, because there's been so many instances where I have done that, and they've had a cash stack on them or like just valuable items that you get. So it's just worth it because it takes like no extra time. It takes like five seconds to just down a guy in nothing and you might get something, but if you get nothing, then you just move on with your day. But that person that dies for nothing is just sat there like, why is he killing me for nothing? Opens Reddit and off he goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. They won't, they yep. won't prayer flicker eat, but they sure will type, okay? Yeah. They will not... <laughs> Yeah, which brings us to the polls, you know? Like, yeah. I feel like that that's one of our mm-hmm. big... So I actually, yeah, I actually have the, the polls up, man, and apparently none of them passed for PvP, but apparently the circlet of water was, was passed. Um, I don't know what fuck that is, dude. Apparently it's a water skin helmet. Pretty much. Yeah. What the fuck? 
Okay. All right. It's from the original game. It's from the original game. They have that too. Okay. I guess just keep importing anything from the original game in old school. Import like, export, baby. Yeah, I, I don't get why that was on the same poll as the yeah. BBC stuff. It's the first yeah, question as well. Like, maybe it was to trick people. <laughs> maybe it, maybe yeah. it was actually to trick people into thinking it was just a normal poll and they'd be like, yep, 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 yep. Well, mm. I would have done that. That's the thing, because I was on stream. I opened it. I read the first thing, and I, I, I closed it. I was like, oh, the PvP poll wasn't out yet. Um, and then my chat was like, no, <laughs> our vote is the next one down. I was like, oh, okay. It's just, yeah, it makes sense to me. I think the poll itself was titled, like, Beneath Cursed Sands, and so, and then it, it is. was, like, PvP... Uh, it says, Reward for Beneath Cursed Sands and PvP Arena. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. when I first opened the poll, I was like, hold on, it's not out. I've called Jagex <laughs> out on this many times. Anytime there is some sort of PvP update, I swear to God, they'll throw it down like it's one of those fucking fixes. You know, like, we well, fixed Port Serum's <laughs> dock. One fucking <laughs> stick was hanging yeah. out. And then it'll be like, here's the biggest wilderness update of the fucking year next to it. And... <sighs> Dude, they do it all the time, and I wonder if if it's on purpose or they just in their mind they're like, oh, that's bigger than PvP. Well, Dude, you know, more people it's care. Not, it's not a priority for Jagex, man. Like that's the mm. truth of it. Like something I'd like to get into with you boys as well is, I mean, like as PvPers, you guys, it's like I'm sure because you're content creators. Like whenever there's something new that's going to come into the game, whether it benefits Iron Man, PVM, skill, and whatever. You're not, like, bitter about the fact that it's not PvP, right? It's like, sure, man. It's like, if other parts of the game are thriving, happy days. But, like, I think, when I think about Deadman Mode, right, and how Deadman Mode was just constantly copy-pasted so, so, so many times with no changes, right? When you compare that to, you know, when they brought out Twisted Leagues, Trailblazers, and you, you compare the amount of effort and passion that was poured into those uh, time-gated uh, modes, temporary game modes they brought into the game. Like, just just have a look and, and see the difference in just pure passion, bro. Like, you can tell that people have poured their hearts into the designs for these game modes. If you compare that mm. to the Deadman mode that was copy and pasted, like, probably close to ten times, and it brings me to my point of... I don't think that this isn't like a personal thing whatsoever, but I I truly believe that there is a lack of passion for PvP from the JMods who work at Old School RuneScape. And that's okay. fine, but I, I do think that there should be people that certainly are passionate about it. And like, let's be honest, boys, at this point, they don't even need to pay anybody. Like, the people who are very passionate about PvP will literally do the work for free, so long as, like, you know... um the fruits of their labor come into the game and we can enjoy them. But it's, it's just something that I've like sort of observed, observed over the last few years. And I, I think that there's just a problem with like the perspective that they have on the wildy and a lack of, a lack of like passion for it. I also think J mods are scared of us, to be honest. Like <laughs> not, not like us as content creators, <laughs> but I genuinely think J-Mods are scared of the PvP community, because it's so hard to do right. I'm scared like, of the fucking PvP community, dude. I'm a little scared of them, bro. No matter what you say, or what you do, when it comes to PvM, it's like, you can release a new boss, and it will be... Maybe you'll have, like, a couple people that whine, but for the most part, everyone's just like, new content, sick. Uh, but with PvP, it's very... It, it's so different, because PvP content can benefit some, but fuck over, like, a different aspect of the PvP community or, like, a different group. So when that happens, they take to Twitter and they flame the first person they can think of, and that is always the J-Mods or Jagex as a whole. It's yeah. a good point, man. But at the same time, Iron Man flame possibly more than PKers and... uh I just wonder, are they also afraid of Iron Man? But then those guys get updates all the time. But yeah, I but swear I, to God, they're not very they friendly. Do it in, I don't think Iron Man gets screwed over by, like, Iron Man updates either. I think for most part, it's just stuff that benefits them. Because it's oh, hard to, it's, it's hard to make an update that doesn't, like, that, that makes it, so, like, the game worse for them. If yeah. they get, like, an extra way to collect buckets of sand, what could you possibly have to say that's negative I mean, about that, apart from, like, Maybe the elitists that like doing well, it the old way. Yeah, I agree. I agree, man. It's hard to really see the, the fallback for a lot of those Iron Man updates, but I will say they get 
a lot of updates and they still talk a lot of shit. And I mean, it's, to it's be honest weird. with you, like West Ham, what you're saying, I would say quite heavily ties in with um, the J mods having a lot of knowledge in the area of like Iron Man. It's like, I haven't seen many updates come into the game for Iron Man that have just been bad and disliked by everybody. And that's probably due to a fact that quite a lot of the J mods enjoy that content and it's on their minds. And they're like, they're actually playing the content thinking this area of the game could be improved by this update. And there's a bunch of reasons for it. I, I'm pretty certain there's not a bunch of J mods that are in the wildy experience in how it is right now saying, wow, this needs to be addressed. Because that's just not happening. They're, they're not playing it, you know? Dude, you're, you're making yeah, a great point. I think point, it's just a more uh, complex situation, unfortunately. Like, mm -hmm. I think PvP is just way more complex than anything else in the game. Mm -hmm. And because there's so many different people to satisfy, you're never mm -hmm. going to be able to satisfy everyone. Also, I, said, I, I saw that Dino was about to say something should go on. No, I was going to say, with the uh, J-Mods thing, uh, I will say this year, it seems like they are trying to make more of an effort. Um, the last four years, there's been like no updates, I swear, for PvP. Mm. Um, whereas this year, I actively see uh, a couple of J-Mods in my stream like, asking questions and stuff. They are trying, but I do agree with you. It's just, I don't think they do it themselves, so they try their best. And for example, the Rev Entrance update that dropped a couple weeks ago, it, it meant well. Like, they were mm -hmm. trying to fix it, but they've made it so much worse. At least I feel like they've made it so much worse. It's so much harder now to actually try and kill a PVMer because if you splash once, they're gone. Um, but it, it comes from the right place, and I feel like if it was an Iron Man update, they would have had the knowledge to sort of be like, oh, that won't work. But because they don't PK, they don't have that knowledge, so they just throw it out, and then it mm. often, sadly, comes off worse for them. I, w yeah. I will say with that update, man, I do think it's a little better, but only because I hope to God they make it so that when you exit the cave, you got to wait a bit. So you're not just fucking chasing a man. But I yeah. honestly, when it comes to those Iron Man updates, uh, Racy, everyone's making fair points. They play these updates and then they change them for the better. I don't think I've ever seen an Iron Man update hit the game and then stay if it was bad. They're always constantly patching it. Whereas PvP updates come in, they never test play them, bro. Ever. And all of a sudden we still got this shit in the game that's never been changed. And they don't even know what it is because they don't, no. it feels like at least, they Dude. don't test what they put in the game. Right, so the thing is, right, time is very high. the thing is, it's always actually been like that, okay? I, I used mm -hmm. to PK back in the on the old servers, the RuneScape Free servers, before it became RuneScape Free, pre-EOC and so forth. Jagex constantly effed us PvPers over, all of the time. Like, bro, I, I I'm, listen, I don't know how you guys feel about this, you guys are probably going to have different opinions, but like, I feel like the Karasi Sword is a good example, right? People remember it, through, through rose-tinted glasses, right? That time, the Karasi sword. The reality is, you're talking about a 250k AGS, right? That you could just go and buy from the Void bloke. Like, that was literally what that thing was. The way that that sword was implemented into the game was terrible, dude. It was ragged fucking city with that thing. The way that they've implemented it into the game now, the Karasi sword is effectively the, um... Oh, the not, uh, which oh, one is it? The volatile, volatile, right? Yeah. Which, which is like, it's a very powerful weapon, but it's locked behind a really annoying boss that has a very small chance of dropping it, right? Um, but like, uh, another example is when Torva, right? When, when all of the, uh, the Nex armors came into the game, um, it, it was just like, start, things started to scale, right? Things started to scale up, and it's like, then you got to like, uh, what was it called? Genodermic? Am I saying that right? Do you remember that armor that yeah, was Gana. it Ganodermic? Yeah. Bro, Ganodermic was a Carol set, a Torag set, and an Arim set, <laughs> all combined. Bro, I, I like people I saw someone I do I it might be Dino that tweeted this is the other day, like bring back Ganodermic. Was it you who said that? <laughs> I, I was the polyport. I like the polyport oh, stuff. Dude, bro, that was like the worst era, dude. The polyport just hit like 50s and it was all yeah. But That's it was the why armor. I liked it. Bro, the, the armor was yeah. just, it was so Disgusting. powerful, dude. And it completely, like, it, it just made like Vestas and like all the armor that was previously really good but had one purpose. It made that stuff kind of bad. It was just kind of like, why would you risk that? It only lasts for 30 minutes. 
why use it when you can just wear this hybrid armor that does everything? Like, they never took into consideration the effects, the updates for the main game would have on the wilderness. That is unchanged. It's the same now as it was back then. You, you know, they really... I, I think one of the solutions that could fix that is if their engine is capable of uh, making an item have two different, like, stat values, depending on where you are in the world, you know? But I, I don't think they have that ability. But if they ever did, that would like I believe they were talking really about really change they, things up. Yeah, they kind of done that with the blowpipe, didn't they? There's um yeah, they changed the attack speed. MPP. They yeah. just changed the attack speed, but but like imagine if they could like change the stats. Like the moment you enter the place, like the stats are just different. Like that could be very interesting. Yeah, it I mean, would they be. Can, it would they fix can a do ton that. of bouncing issues, but I don't but know I if think, they can do that. I think the main problem we're seeing, though, is that even if that was a thing, how would they implement it and would they know how to implement it? And if they implemented it badly, which is pretty much possible, would they fix it? Or would that be in the game for the next four years? It, it, you know? Dude, honestly, at this point, it's like if people yeah. complain about something, like it will be addressed if it's complained about enough. Um, but something that they have done and always have done Sorry, I said that twice. My God, I'm stroking out. <laughs> is like I remember when Overloads first came into the game, like way back on the old servers, right? For the first few days of Overloads coming into the game, you could use them in the wildy, right? No shit. And people were just like one-tapping people because they were that powerful. I, I think the old Overloads took you to like 125 strength and attack. Oh my God. People, dude, I, I remember watching like a clip of some dude at Mage Bank just one-shotting somebody with claws. Like just bam gone and they, they removed it so like that's not too much of an issue like if jagex brings something into the game if it's terrible for the wildy it, it's like it's the people who pk it's their responsibility to be like hey this is just just please remove this or make it capped right. or, or whatever no no we're talking about gear though you know you can't be well, like yo this, well, well, this the, the same applies well yeah they could why not if they bring out some gear that is way too powerful for the wilderness that has only a pvm like reason for use I, I think that why would it need to come into the wildy? You know what I mean? Well, well it's not. It's never really been done though. Like um, that's the that's kind of like the thing. I'm trying to think. Because like they they can like like adjust the speed or or whatever, right? But like for gear, they've never really been like, oh, you're forbidden from you know bringing this to the wilderness. Well, they have in demo mode. Apparently, they don't let you use uh, bulwarks in uh, dead man mode. Huh? That's kind of yeah. Weird. I mean, like, if they want to for the future, just make it as simple as okay, you just literally can't enter because you have this. <laughs> I don't know. Like, if my, they do that, my, they need to my, do that for the bofa. That that bow is uh, oh, ridiculous yeah. in PvP. So good, yeah. <laughs> it's, yes, it's stupid accurate. Like, holy shit! I run away from those people when you're using it. Yeah, it's just um. Again, I think go back to what Racy said, is they implement it for PvM, and they forget that it has an effect on PvP. Like, I don't think they ever imagined that both would be used in PvP, but ever since it's come out, it's ridiculously... It's so much better than the Zarek crossbow. Um, it's and, faster and more accurate. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> just if you get a prayer wrong, you're going to get hit a 40. Like, it's <laughs> disgusting. I don't think they realize how broken it is. Um, so yeah, so going back to what you were saying with like the gear... If, if they're doing something where like the certain gear shouldn't be laying, I think they should test it with that because I don't think any PGA will actually complain. I mean, the yeah, thing is, it's... like, at, as the game continues to like progress and grow, and there's new updates, there's going to be armor that comes into the game. At some point, the like I, I'm telling you right now, that, 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 that crystal right. armor is like the tip of the iceberg, bro. There's going to yeah. be more and more that comes in, and if they don't implement a way to prevent that coming into the wildy. Like, that shit's just going to get worse. And I, I think it's yeah, really like important they address yeah. that. Right. Uh, RuneScape 3, when they released... Uh, did you ever play Legacy Mode on RuneScape 3 when that came out? That that was like yeah. the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just no yeah. abilities. It, just no it, abilities. Yeah. It, it was them trying to get the old combat system back uh, in the, like... I guess the new game pretty much. Well, like they, they kind of wanted the PKers that quit the game because of the new combat system to come back. It was fun in the beginning. It wasn't uh, like it was close, but still quite far off from the old combat system. Regardless, uh, the point I was trying to make is like after a year or so of legacy mode existing and them continuing with the game, there was like these tier 90 weapons that came in like the noxious scythe. And you could hit, like, you could just whack 90. <laughs> like, you could one-shot people with just a swing of a weapon. 
And that was it. Like, it, it just didn't work because it was too powerful. It had to, it, it literally had to be nerfed for PvP. Otherwise, it just wasn't going to work. And Legacy Mode died. Yeah. Mm, I mean, yeah. hey, listen, I, I think this is a good way to transition into... We're, we're talking about things that potentially could be too powerful for PvP. But how about we talk about the actual polling system itself and how it, it seems like anything PvP related at this point ain't coming into the game if it's going to have to pass at 75%. How do you guys feel about that? Uh, I really liked the polls when the game first came out, but I, I can't see them being... Well, from a PvP perspective, like, it's nothing is going to pass. It's becoming it's, too biased. That's yeah. The problem. Yeah, way too biased. Before this poll that just came out, um, I can kind of understand why the armors didn't pass, because a lot of people didn't even realize, like, I think you could hit, like, a 90 with the original planned, with this armor of, like, an AGS... Um, yeah. But it actually got nerfed, so you could max, I think, was it in 86, was that? Yeah. Um, That's still crazy. They didn't really advertise that anywhere. <laughs> so a lot of people still voted no on... Because you're, obviously you're going to have power creep and bringing new gear in, because you, you want to make it good. Um, but a lot of people are scared of hitting the bigger numbers. Um, I don't know, this but, was the um, the void that they were talking about from the PvP arena, right? Yes, yeah, originally okay. you could max a 90 with the AGS, with that void and like yeah, all yeah, the yeah, best yeah. in slot stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then they nerfed it to being able to max an 86, but they didn't really tell anyone. So I feel like a lot of people voted no, because they still had in their head, like, people are going to start in 90s. Just 86s, um, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, it's yeah. a hard one, because you can... Don't, don't get us <laughs> wrong, it, it was still very good. It just didn't hit 90s anymore. It's just no, hard, good. because you won't be able to bring in new gear without it being better. And we're already at the 86 mark already, you know? It's going to have to creep up at some point. Um, with the polling system itself, I I could see why the armors failed if you know people voted against them. But the rings, there was no reason for the imbued rings to fail. The only reason they would have failed if the spike voted against. Um, so that just kind of says it, really. Like, there's not one negative. There's not one reason they would have uh, failed the poll. Yeah. For this armor, was that able to be used in the wild or just the arena? In the wild. Yeah. It be used yeah. In the wild. Yeah. We don't need any more new shit that's scary coming in the wild. I well, will well, say that. Dude, dude, here, here's the Please. thing that was interesting about it, right? So if I remember, and I'm remembering back a few months now, they proposed to have new gloves that basically match barrow gloves um, and a torso, I believe. And effectively, it meant that you could have barrow gloves, but you didn't have to quest for them. And like we all know at this point that most people that <laughs> just want to do PvP aren't the biggest fan of anything other than PvP. So... That's kind of what it was catering towards. Oh, this is a really good question then. So it looks like we have different stances. Like, you know, there's some different stances here, right? Like, do you guys really like the idea of new strong gear coming into the wilderness? Or would you rather just have them design content that makes it so that more people just come into the wilderness so that you guys can actually PK and have fun in the wilderness? My name you know I mean? on RS is Big Hit Good. I think well, I mean I, yeah. I, I think personally yeah. if they're gonna add um, if they're gonna basically up the max hit so you can get KO'd for max health easier, uh, well then that needs to scale up with the HP. Like if that's some sort of edible that you can eat above what the current max is. Like at the moment the max HP is like hundred and twenty or hundred and twenty one. And it's like you can get one shot through that, like over by how how much West Ham you probably know, like how much how much HP over the max health can you currently get one shot by? In max strength, you can get an 89 claw followed by a 50 maul. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah, but so, so my, my point is, like, <laughs> if they are going to... That's a poop to expect, though, so there's plenty of room to eat. Yeah. <laughs> if they are going to, like, power crip and, like, weapons are going to get way more powerful, there needs to be a counter to that. Like, there, there's, a, there's a balance, right, between um, something hitting really high and your ability to be able to outplay it. If there is no ability for you to be able to actually outmaneuver the damage, then the damage is too much, right? And that either needs well, to be scaled well, the, down the, or the, the HP But the question would up. be, would you prefer them just to make updates that makes the wilderness more, more popular rather than like, Oh, here's a new item that you can use. So try it out in the wilderness, like 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 rather gimmickily oh, bring people into the wilderness. You so know so like so like updates for the wildy or new items to use in the wildy, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you think is stronger? What do you think has a better effect 
on, you know, because like, it, what's the point of the wilderness too, right? Is it because you want it to be more active and people have fun with it? Or do you want to just bait people in by using a new weapon and then maybe establish like some sort of, you know, some sort of like practice because of this one weapon, right? I don't personally think it's, the wildy should drop anything that's best in slot anywhere. It should purely be GP incentive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, but, sorry. Maybe, maybe maybe the question is a little uh, misleading. I meant, like, let's say they just bring out any item, and it's not specifically wilderness, right? It's just It just happens to be a stronger item, and, of course, you can you can use it in the wilderness. Like, would you prefer them to just actually make updates that is specifically wilderness, you know, like, incentivized, where, like, it's a new boss, uh, you know, more money, uh, or, like, you know, the revs got updated, so it's, there's multi, and then there's single, you know, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm I'm different. Drop, uh... Sorry, go on, Dino. No, I'd say they're, they're different things. Like, the PvP arena would have been good for PvP, but it wouldn't have revived the wilderness in any way. Um, yeah. They're completely separate. In well, my I opinion, they're completely separate. Tried it up things. more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah. Um, I would personally rather them have new wildy stuff, um, like new bosses, better money. Um, I still like the idea of things like Brawler Gloves, but I know a lot of people don't, but things like that. I like yeah, those, um, yeah. Yeah, they were great. But... I don't think Honestly. that's ever come into old school, though, let's be honest. No, no. I, think, um, um, I think the idea behind the PvP arena, like, the, like this is the way that I kind of see it. I want the PvP arena, I'll say that firstly, is I get a lot of people come into my, my streams when I'm doing LMS, and they're like, hey, how can I learn how to do... It, it, like, is this a good way for me to learn how to do PvP? And my honest answer is no. I was like, if you come to LMS you're, you're going to get your, your cheek slapped and you're probably going to get clapped. <laughs> and it's like, it's just not a good time. I was like, there needs to be something where, like, let's say there is a PvP arena. Let's say you have your promo fights, you have 10 promo fights. Let's say you win your 10 promo fights. You're going to be put into a category versus other players, ideally, who have also won their 10, and vice versa if you lose your 10. So that, to me, seems like a good incentive for new players who want to learn how to hybrid, which there are actually some people that do, to actually be able to fight somebody on an even playing field. And then maybe transfer those skills into the wildy if they decide to do that. So I, I kind of understand, like, where it's coming from. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not against the PvP arena. Um, again, the issue is, is I feel like, same with Last Man Standing, it does more damage to the wilderness than good. Um, because the whole thing with the Woody back in the day was you got to a level that was decent, you could go in there and you could kill someone who's worse than you. Whereas now a lot of people who are at that bottom level are just playing last man standing and they're not going in there. Um, which makes kind of takes out the whole bottom and sometimes the mid tier of like the system. Um, so the only, say you play LMS for ages, you get decent, you go into the wilderness, you're only going to be finding really good people because everyone else your level is playing last man standing. It's, I see. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, keep going, buddy. No, I was going to say, that's my personal view on it. But I was for the PvP arena, even though it would have, in my opinion, a negative effect on the wieldy. Um, I do feel like there is a space for it in the game, um, if it's done right. But yeah, it would need something. It needs some sort of yeah. reward. At the moment, it's getting nothing. So I feel I feel you 100%. Like, even if there was a statue of a bucket in the middle of the wild, I'd vote yes, just because it's a wilderness update, you know what I mean? <laughs> so even if this arena... Overall, it's probably going to be ass. I had, a, I had a little topic I wrote down. It says, "Are is the wilderness becoming safer and is that bad? Right? Or mainly, mainly PvP is becoming safer. Right? You got LMS in a safe zone, which does give you money. And now we're going to have the arena, which I'm assuming is going to give you a reward. But you're not stepping foot into the wild. And like Dino says, it is taking out a big portion of what I would like to call the wilderness food chain. You know, I'm always under the impression that the wilderness would be much more fun if there was just a bunch of shitty people running around than a bunch of West Ham's. I love West Ham. He has every <laughs> right to go PK. All right. But I'm telling you, if everyone's like West Ham, no one to go in the fucking wild, right? We need these noobs, is- this bottom level layer to attract other people in. And the only way to attract those people is money. You know, just like sequels, they see something shiny, they wander you know- right on it. You know, that's really the issue with RuneScape is that we, we uh, our, our player base is mostly still 20 year olds, you know? We don't have like yeah. those Fortnite kids that want to 
check out this game. And Those I think 20-year-olds really... suck ass at RuneScape, bro. All right? I'm telling yeah, you, man, well, they're the not very is... good still. <laughs> yeah, but they, yeah. They, they, like, the 20 to 30-year-olds handle loss of GP a lot worse than what kids do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah kids yeah. be like, aw, I lost money, you know, whereas, yeah, like, man, the other guys are like, oh, this yeah. kid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hate yeah, mom. But, that, you know, like... but that's what I'm saying. Like, we yeah. need to build that pyramid, right? And the only way to get those bottom-level people in is to have a high-risk, high-reward Anything in the wild. They can go out, they can get killed, but hell, they'll make it back the next trip. There's nothing like that in the wild. You die once anywhere, you're down, bro. You go oh, to wow. Callisto, you're down. Revs, yeah. down. Altar, no one's even bringing noted bones, dude. What do you, where's your profit there? You die, of course you're not making money. There's nowhere in the wild where you could bounce back after a kill, except for yeah. Revs multi. And that's gone. Yeah, you know, you know, I think, I think it all needs to start. Like, there needs to be a spark, right? And then there needs to be momentum. I think fixing the rev case would really like create the spark. You know, like maybe to start something, right? But I, I think it. But yeah, that's kind I, of the deal. I, yeah. I think something that'd be really good to establish real quick is um, how do you two, or Mike included, all three of you that actively PK, like, what is it exactly that you would want to see? from the wilderness, from PvP? Like, what is the thing that you have in your mind that is like, that's the vision that I want for this? Currently, I'm on the, like, belief system that less is more at the moment, because there's... I, I genuinely think there's too much stuff in the wilderness at the moment that don't really serve a purpose, other than to just spread people, like, thinner out. Yeah. I like, agree. Like there's, there's too there's too many locations right now that just don't really fill a purpose, but they are there, and they some people go there, but not enough. And then there's 200 worlds on top of that, so you have like yep. 20 different hop, like locations that you can PK at. You have 200 different worlds, not enough PKs to supply that. So they yeah. they I, I genuinely think they need to rework the content that they have to make it more like interesting or like even remove or like move things closer than to add more stuff so like condense it of sorts yeah okay yeah kind of like you know the woody expansion that was worked on a couple weeks ago in that uh, game jam yep um some of them ideas were great but i feel like rather than for example adding another resource arena they should just replace the current one um and just make it Profitable because no one's at the resource room. There's the odd guy fishing crabs, um, and he might have like 20k on him, but like no one actually uses it. Whereas if they gave that a purpose, that right there is a spot. Um, it's just they just need to rework the current things and make them because the woody stayed the same money for years. And outside the woody, you've got stuff like Zora, Vorkaf, like no, that's why no one's doing it. Green Dragons is no longer the best moneymaker. Um, yeah. I remember seeing that Boaty video, and he was talking about like how back in 2006, 7. Green Dragons was like the best GP per hour, which is why it was active. Um, and then like Mint said, you get the noobs there and it's the food chain. You get the noobs there to kill them, make the money. The better PKs kill them. The good PKs kill them and the teams kill them. Uh, whereas now there's no reason for the noobs to go in there because there's no money to be made. You, they just need to sort of redo, rework some of the existing content. Yeah. No, I, agreed, I swear agreed. to God, man, we would fix the wild, bro, instantly. <laughs> we just fly us over, Jagex, we'll fix it. I actually, in my brain, I was just thinking of a couple things that would probably make the wild incredibly active pretty fast. One would be multi-revs. Um, obviously, that, obviously, I do think the wilderness updates that they brought out were kind of ass-backwards, you know, a single plus. It's like, why would you update the, the combat mechanics when the wilderness is dead? It's like, wouldn't you want to put something new in the wild, bring people in, and then test the mechanics out? And then they bring in, uh, you know, the arena. Oh, you want to drag more? It's all this, all these updates are ass backwards. They got to work for the wild, get the rev caves popping, maybe do some wilderness slayer update, revamp the wilderness bosses, obviously. I love to see the clue, uh, wilderness clue idea where you get a, a clue in the wild and you have to go do puzzles in the wild with risk and you can get PK for the clue. Dude, bring that shit out. And it should feel like when you're in the wild, there's money. Anywhere you're not tons, but a decent amount. Even if you're butt naked, even though you shouldn't be butt naked in the wild, you should be able to make some sort of money with risk, but you're just walking around, you see some shit, right? I yeah. mean, it used to be white berries. That shit's botted, right? It, it should feel fruitful. It should feel like a long farm run. You're in the wild, you're constantly around money, okay? So, mm. if I'm hearing this correctly, uh, it sounds like something that they should do, 
like as the first thing, is basically clean up the bit of mess they have, condense the content they have, um, make it so that you know you can easily make more money in the wilderness. And I'm kind of assuming here, but kind of keep the PK mechanics uh, virtually unchanged from how they are now, because I'm assuming that we're happy with the actual mechanics uh, of PKing, or are we not? I'll touch that real quick. I do not think Single Plus deserves to be everywhere in the wild, and whatever the fuck's going on from Single to Multi, I don't know what the hell Why that is, dude. Smiling. Oh my <laughs> yeah, god, bro. Dude, the, what the, the fuck timer. is that, bro? <laughs> it's... I've had many arguments about the whole PJ timer thing. <laughs> no one um, brings it up, and it's the most wonky bullshit in the wild, bro. Right? Right right, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, it, it's even affected the, the PVM stuff. Like, when you AFK with mobs, they, like, just look at you for 10 seconds, and then they attack. It's weird. Like, it's the worst update that's ever hit the game, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, I am so against it, but I speak about it every single stream, and my stream know that I'm against it, so they just bait me every day. So that's why I try not to bring up too much now. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it was like it was like Mint said with the game; it was already dead. So instead of them adding new updates to try and encourage growth, they just completely changed the mechanics to something no one really asked for, um, and it's just fully killed it. The activity has been less than ever. I would go up, I'll fight the same three people of the exact same three fights. There's no variety now. Teams it like can't a hit you. Server. Yeah, you just yeah. but like, teams can't hit you anymore. I know some people like thought it was like cyberbullying or whatever, but that's just what the game been if your team hit you. Um, you can't PK with friends anymore. The, I am just so against the PJ timer update. If, if I had my dream, I would get rid of singles plus completely, have Rev Caves as just multi, have somewhere similar to Revs outside of the world he works, like good GP. Um, I don't know, say like the Ankus, for example, for now, make that good money. Um, but then have it back to the old system where there are teams and stuff and you can have fun with friends. Because at the moment, it's just so stale. It's the same thing over and over and over. Again, yeah. I don't want to go into it too much because I will literally ramble for five hours about this. I mean, well, I want to I want to know <laughs> where they got the idea to do it. Like, as in, you know, that seems like a game-changing well, mechanic created. for PvP. I um I the actually had the idea, bro. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think they got it from me, but I had the idea where you could attack somebody off a boss or a PVM monster, and I thought it was the coolest thing. I just didn't think they'd add it to every square piece of the wild and then fuck multi up. So I did not, you know, calculate that in, bro. But I always wanted to be able to attack somebody off a monster in the wild. The, so the biggest um, thing was. Sorry, go on. No, I, I was just gonna say that like there's. So many different types of people in PvP, kind of what I was going on about earlier. There's people that hate this update, and there's people that love this update. Like, a lot of people had been asking for this update simply because they think teams are too overpowered. And that's fair, but at the same time, I think there are areas that already kind of satisfy that 1v1 type of need, where, like, you couldn't team on someone, uh, such as PvP worlds and Bounty Hunter worlds. So, I don't know. It, I, I wasn't that big of a fan of the update, but I thought it was like, I, I don't mind it either, because at the end of the day, I'm a content creator, it benefits me. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I'd imagine. Who the fuck wants to get caught by you? But um, <laughs> I do think that there is a there's an area for single plus. It's just not in every square of the wild. Like, for me, a perfect wilderness would be if you go, like, even the Laren's chest, we take out that whole boat. Right, what the hell's up with that ladder? No one even PKs there. Imagine finding someone, he's just up and down a ladder. Dude, that's <laughs> ass. Take the boat down, and then maybe add in, like, dead memo mechanics where you can't log out, right? What if you just can't fucking log out, bro, for, like, eight seconds in certain areas of the wild? You'd keep people there, auto-log out. There's just certain things that are already in the game. They could maybe maybe implement them in certain areas, right? Because I know in dead mode, you could log out incredibly fast in the safe zone, and you couldn't in... PvP, I'm not sure. I think so. So it, they might it could already be as simple as like giving you a totem from the chest, and then inside of like banks, you can trade that totem, and then you get the reward. But while you're carrying the totem, you cannot log out. You have For to real? run to a bank. Boys. We just saved the wild. Do you understand that? Boys. This <laughs> update, we just saved the fucking. Well, you just hold something and you can't log out, and then the only way you make money is holding that thing, and then Boys. that could be like something you get from the wilderness. It'd be like I've an just, emblem, but not ass. I, I've just had an idea, man. You guys are talking about condensing the worldy. I see it a lot. People say about restricting the amount of worlds in which you can go into the worldy and do worldy content. Yeah, we right? even talked about this before. We randomly. have. So yeah. a big 
like basically there are a lot of issues with the with the wildy. It's hard for everybody in the wildy to agree on the same things. Although there are some things that we can all agree on, right? But I think everything boils down to you can have the best idea in the world for the wilderness. End of the day, if it ain't passing that poll, it doesn't matter. And at this point, we have a real issue with that. Now, here's my suggestion. How do you guys feel if they made it, they killed two birds with one stone? Not only did they condense the worlds, okay? And this is something that's voted on. They condense the worlds, and then they make it so there's a few select worlds where you can still go into the wildy, and you can be PK safe, and you can do just clue scrolls. But in return for that, if you are not a PvPer, you can no longer vote on the PvP polls. But you can do your clue scrolls without being attacked. Is there any way where we get to get their spade still? Or because like, Nope. None of that. Do. If I like do, do you know what? There even leave a spade. There will be a spade sp- spawned at all of the locations you have to dig. So they don't even have to right. take one. They can just get a free one while they're there. <laughs> I, I personally think the polls are doomed from here on out, no matter what you do. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's it silly. is partially our own fault. Like, the whole, like, uh, PvP is grouping together to vote no on Group Iron Man was the dumbest shit we have ever done as a collective community. Like, that was the worst idea we had. Yeah, it's we, How did the poll yeah, look? We're, we're, like, we're like a small, the smallest community in the game, and we decided that, yeah, we, yeah, no, 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 we can make this work. Like, fuck them. We, we can definitely get this done. Did not work at all. Now we will definitely never get an update in the game. Literally, I don't even know why that like happened. For the poll. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh my God. God. The smallest I mean, community just taking on the rest of the game didn't backfire and now all the Reddit, free. all the Reddit indies do you fighting so, against them? I mean, do you guys can. have any solutions for um, like PvP stuff passing the poll system? Like, uh, any ideas on what could be done? I, no, I don't think anything will. <laughs> like, I genuinely don't think anything PvP will. And again, I go back to the rings. Um, you won't get anything that was as neutral as Bings through the PvP arena, and that failed. Um, it just kind of shows that there is spite voting. There's there's no reason for that to fail. I understand with some of the overpowered gear, because, as like I said earlier, people are scared of it. But if they failed, I think everything will. Unless they change the poll system, but I don't know how they change it or if they would. So, I mean, uh, dude, I mean, like, for me, I think... I don't even think PvP stuff should really be... I, I certainly don't think that it should be a 75% pass. Like, I do not... Not, not even a part of me. And like another thing, a reason for that is because, like you said, the PvP community is actually it makes up such a small percentage of the overall game and the player base. It's kind of like, well, there's only like a tiny amount of people that do it, anyways. And it's like at this point, stuff just ain't gonna pass. And I, I it really bothers me because there are so many good ideas. Like we're talking about the um the the game gen mods of fans idea of the wildy extension. Which, as a previous old school PK, seeing there being like, you know, like a new update that extends the wilderness, it is something that I've dreamt about since I was like a little kid, man. But like, then there's also the, wait, this has to pass a poll. Like, this is wasted effort. Like, somebody's, you know, pouring some passion into PvP for the first time in a long time. But the chances of it actually coming into the game is just so slim, you know? And it it just doesn't seem fair. They tried to change that, didn't they, this time, by having a requirement to vote. Um, but it worked out. It was like, if you played two games of Last Man Stand, and you could vote on the poll, or something like that. So all the Iron Men could still vote. Um, <laughs> so that, that's okay. a good way to... I, I had the idea fixing the poll system a couple years back, where you could either have your account, any account, a PVM or PK or, or, or a skiller, or maybe even less, maybe just PK or regular player right you could have whatever and, and in order to get into this branch of whatever you fit into you have you have requirements it wouldn't be two last man standing games right that's ridiculous it would be like maybe 50 deep loady kills maybe maybe you kill some of the monsters i don't know something that is achievable but not to everybody and if they wanted to they could but then they're a pk on that account you can't change it and then if you were to vote on certain polls depending on your your status you would get more voting pressure so if it's a pvp update and you're a pk your vote would count more, but you couldn't downvote PVM stuff because it would it would count a little less. I don't know if that would segregate or fixed idea. Seventy five percent is way too high, but I've always had the idea that people could just kind of have their vote count for more depending on what they actually do in the game. 
I yeah, see, I've, I've, I've think never I'm, her like that. I, th- I yeah. think I'm actually... What? Oh, sorry, go, go. What, like, so if you do certain things, then your vote matters more than another, like, player who's brand new. Yeah, but it wouldn't be like, oh, if you're max level, it's like this. It would just be maybe, like, you have a 2x vote or you get a 1 vote, right? And if you're, you you count as a PK, you get 2x, right? And then if you don't, uh, it'll it'll be, like, half that. So that if you're an Iron Man, you literally can't just be, like, fucking voting all the PvP updates. But at the same time, if you want an Iron Man update, you're you're going to get it. Not that we vote no anyways, right? But... Yeah, I don't. I don't really want to co- come across as a cub, but like, imagine that. But like in real life, <laughs> like, I know it yeah. wouldn't work in real life. That'd be too <laughs> yeah, segregated. I, I, I'm just. I, I'm just saying. Like, I don't think <laughs> even in a game, people yeah. are going to be accepting of the Dude, fact that. Yeah. Oh, my vote matters less because this cunt's got like twenty thousand <laughs> more hours than me. The sweaty little Grebo sat there playing RuneScape all day, and therefore his vote is more important than mine. Fuck that guy. I'm also a paying customer. Yeah. No, agreed. It would definitely be be rough. I'm not saying it's it's a win, but maybe something down that line of ideas where it's like, you know, you could Yo, just spam vote on like a brand they, new. They still they can still do the integrity updates, man. You know, because because they've done it before. So at this point, they they can just bypass the polling system as much as they they yeah. feel like they should. To be honest, I think That's it's all jagged the solution. Man. Yeah, because the polling system is. They are the, dude, they are the puppeteers. Like, they are the people that are in control of the fate of the game, bro. And, you know, I don't know, man. PvP, like I said, I stopped doing it because of the lack of updates that came into it, because it just made me so sad to see nothing, virtually nothing was changed. And it's like, Jagex are the only people that can do anything about this. And I think that, you know, so far, the polling system has worked. They have a successful game with a reoccurring um, player base. You know, by the end of the day, it's like, I think that it equally could be the downfall of the game. Like, especially in the next couple of years, if things don't oh, yeah, start coming yeah. in. It's, so, it, like, dude, we spoke on, I think, in the last podcast, or maybe with, I swear we spoke about this a while back, but we were talking about the raids. Dude, it's been five years since the last raid came out. That is a ridiculous length of time for, like, an end game piece of content to come out, man. Like, games die in that time. Like, that's a long period think, of time. I think Jagex touched on that um, in a and a I'm not entirely sure, but uh, one of the main things that at least I've heard, it might have been on a and a might have not been, regardless, was if they want to do like something like a brand new raid, that will take loads of time. But making something like Next does not take in that much time. So it's kind of up to like the player base to also decide... What type of content do we want? Do we want multiple small bosses that come out consistently like every year? Or do we want this one big thing that only happens every three, four years? And I think that's kind of like where their struggle lies. Because if they want to make a raid, it's a lot of effort because it has to be brand new. It has to be enticing. It has to be like completely new mechanics. The rewards have to be good. Whilst if they just make new bosses, like, the uh, smaller ones, then they could probably shit those out, like, maybe three times a year. The thing is, even with that, again, a lot of my community are PVMers, um, and what we spoke about earlier about, like, communities being happy for other communities getting updates, like, for example, P- PvP, uh, talking about PVM updates. Before Net, I think the last new boss that PVMers got was Nightmare, which was, like, three years years ago, then two and a half years ago. They had, like, hard mode mm-hmm. TOBs and stuff added, but they're not even pumping them bosses out. Like, even they're dry as well. Yeah, what was the like, last okay. boss we had? Fishing boss? I think it was the fishing one, right? That counts, oh. right? <laughs> I, I have no idea with the skill one. <laughs> like, like, like t- to be honest, you know, quality over quantity, man. I feel like, in terms of RuneScape, uh, like, PVM section, I feel like, obviously, that's just, like, the most popular you know popular type of activity right like and and skilling being the probably the next the, the thing behind it but like honestly i don't think the pacing for that for it is particularly um you know slow because most of these grinds like these bosses you you end up just spending you know like literally year year plus sometimes doing him so it's not it's not like this game is slow right like if we're not talking about pvp this game is like a slow game and and i think that's kind of like one of its strengths Right, you would think, oh wow, no, no update, uh, no boss in in a year, game's dying. But like, you know, I feel like the the 
the player base has always been very steady or growing despite that. So I don't think that's necessarily something that we should necessarily be complaining about because because the problem sometimes is when there's too many updates and too many equipment coming out, balancing it becomes hell. And then you have this problem where all these items that you used to care about gets like, you know, become so redundant. And then people are like, oh, all my shit's worthless. I got to get this new shit. You know, like, like, I think one of the strengths is actually because it's kind of slow, we have time to appreciate those items and build a culture around it and like keep its significance, right? Like, like we still have the whips to this day feeling like, oh, wow, you know, it's, you know, still pretty expensive. I feel like when we go too fast, like we start not being yeah. able to handle keeping old stuff prominent. And then like, that's when the game's really, yeah, we're going to have mean, another really bad issue of devaluation, which I think bad. is something that the original game, you know, had a real, real problem with, right? Like the moment EOC came out, a bunch of those items became complete garbage and then it was, it was over. So yeah. I, I don't think that's necessarily a weak point, but I think, I, I do think the polling system and, and the way it works with PvP is, is a serious problem. You know, coming from someone that PVMs like all day, every day, I don't vote on the polls. I haven't in years because I just don't, I don't believe in the, the system because it's completely biased. You know, it's like 90% people that skill PVM are Reddit. You know, they'll just vote yes to benefit them. And, and PvP is never going to make it in, in that regard, right? Like, I'm just looking at it objectively. It's bullshit, like the way it works. So, so I think that's a real genuine problem because RuneScape, um, it isn't just PVM. I don't like the fact that 90% of players are like skilling in P- uh, PVM only, right? Like, I, I like the fact when it was more like, you know, better balanced. I, I feel like it's more healthy for the game because PvP is huge in other games you know, and, and that's how they can grow, how you can really grow too. Not just getting everyone to just PVM, right? In my opinion. So I think that's a real issue that hopefully they, they can actually fix, you know, and that's coming from a PVMer, right? From, you yeah, know, that's uh, the I- least biased as it gets. So. I, I agree with that as well. I think um, Jagex can also kind of dictate like where a poll goes. The Wilderness Survey is a like quite not not the one that we just got, but the one before that is a good example of phrasing questions in a way to like almost lead towards the answer that you want. Like in the Wilderness Survey, I, I don't remember the questions word for word, but like some of them were so outrageously like asked. It was like, "Are teams? Do teams have an advantage in the Wilderness? Yes or no?" <laughs> like, yeah, it's obviously yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like that doesn't mean that they should be incinerated. <laughs> yeah, they they literally asked if they had an advantage. So even I voted yes, and then they're like, "Okay, PJ, PJ timer across the whole wilderness." Like, this is not what I meant. This wasn't. Uh... You know, yeah. I think they said they're like, oh, we're, we'll be monitoring this. So uh, if anything goes not as planned, we, you know, we can always revert back. But I don't monitoring know. Monitoring the, the PJ timer? Yeah, yeah. I remember what reading it. What the fuck's it. up with multi, dude? Like, come <laughs> on, bro. I've yeah, not um, even seen them mention that shit. It's so disgusting. Yeah, I'm so I'm, I hate corporate talk. Like, because yeah. it's such like every it's single corporate. update is like, we're monitoring this very closely and we'll update you as it goes. And it's just yeah. like... Okay, we asked you three weeks ago, because, like, currently in the wilderness, right, um, if you get attacked by an NPC, you then can't hit a player for 12 seconds. And that was brought up on day one. It was meant to be fixed on day one. It has still not been fixed, and they're just like, yeah, we're planning on fixing it soon. (laughs) Yeah, no. Yeah, it's low priority, man. Low priority. That's hell. Basically, that's... That just means if you're PVMing and you see a PKer... You can just log out before they can attack you. So, like, if if you log in on a PK on a on a PVMer, say attacking an Anku again, before you can attack them, if they see you, they can log out before you can actually attack them. Um, the Woody is just so broke with things like that at the moment. But yeah, they're just not monitoring it. They've just thrown the update in and they've left it. There's um, there's a ton of ways to bypass stuff. What I'm seeing lately is just one rev spot. You attack the rev log out, it just stays there, and then you get attacked without getting attacked back. And then the dude on top of that glitch also has a dude boxing him anytime he needs it. And then I, I report on a video and he's like, Oh, what are you being a pussy for reporting that guy for, for boxing? It's not even bannable. I'm like, if this is not bannable, then what the fuck is the wild? So everyone can just come out here and not die. It should be bannable, dude. Like, man. Yeah. man, do you know, I've had this, yeah, it's had in Jagger's hands voice. I've had this fault for a long time where like, where there's been such a lack of updates for the Wildy, like, 
I, I have seen new potential updates coming in, uh, like the game Jam Wilderness expansion, and with the thought of it not passing, there's a point in my mind where I'm like, when is enough enough? Like, when is the point when the dinos and West Hams of the game who just do PvP say, do you know what? I'm not getting my, my fix of PvP at this point. Like, is there, like, a line that you guys will draw in terms of, like, are you ever going to jump ship if they don't start bringing PvP updates into the game? Are you just going to bite the bullet and, like, see how it goes? Like, what, what are your mindsets I mean, on that? you got to keep in mind, we're content creators, which is so, like, even even if I hated the state of PvP, which, well, I mean, I hate the state of it, but I still love PvP on this game, um can't really quit it because it's my job <laughs> like um we would we would have to be sure that we could move elsewhere and still maintain our jobs otherwise we can't really just put like we can't just quit pvp okay yeah i do fight for it i would say with that line that you said i pretty much hit that over a year ago um when there was before the last dead man it got to a point where you were just hopping and I would come on, I would do a six hour stream and I wouldn't get a fight. I, like, I'm hopping worlds for six hours. Um, and it just gets to a point where you're just like, this is not the game that I used to love anymore. Um, but obviously you, there's some days there's action and there's some days that are still like that now. Uh, so just anything to bring activity is sick. But yeah, in terms of the line, I think I'm, for me anyway, I'm sort of past that. I obviously still enjoy the game, otherwise I wouldn't stream it, but it's just sort of living on the dead hope. Like, oh, I might be active today, it might be active today, and it just never is, not compared to what it used to be. Um, yeah. And I think going back to what uh, I think Rice mentioned a few minutes ago in terms of, like, I think it was talking about, like, promoting the game and how, like, PvP should be a part. I know it's mainly PVM now. When you look at things like Dead Man, um, views on Twitch were insane. The old school category had over 100,000 views when, like, Oda and everyone was streaming it. But... It still just gets no love. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like it's such a good form of promoting the game to get new players in the PvP side because it does get the views, but it still just doesn't get any any sort of support. Agreed, dude. So you guys aren't jump on a Roblox after this, or you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I swear, every PK or their retirement package is an Iron Man series, so we can all <laughs> look forward to that. If it completely dies, oh, welcome, welcome, like... welcome, guys. Man, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Iron Man and PVPers, I swear, every time I've been in Oda's stream recently, he's been oh, on his okay. Iron Man. Has he just stopped doing PVP, or is it like what's the deal there? Uh, I, I don't yeah, fully know. I think... I think he's gone out and said he doesn't like it anymore, doesn't he? I, I think he pretty much said it's boring and it's dead, and he just made a hardcore. Um, yeah. I watch, I try and watch as many other streams as I can because I do love him, but I don't like know him as like as like a friend. Um, but I'm fairly sure he is literally just done with it. He's like, it's, wow. well, you can't blame him. Like I say, it hasn't been an update for so long. It's just the same thing. Yeah. Oh man, it makes me so sad to think about, bro. Like. Like, the thing is, like, there are plenty of games out there for PvP. There are fantastic games out there that are for PvP that will itch your itch. But there is no PvP like RuneScape PvP, right? And it's like, by the time that you've committed enough time to be at a level which is decent, like, you're talking hundreds if not thousands of hours. And, it, like, there's no way of really tracking your progression. It's like a self-taught thing that is incredibly special and unique. And, like, we've said this plenty of times, man, but, like, when, when you have content creators like Manked Up Mage, Seb, right, who, who wins, like, back-to-back-to-back, like, eSport, Dead Mambo tournaments, PvP All-Stars, and then this man literally can't afford to be a content creator and has to get a regular job, it, it's like something is severely lacking there. Like, what what is that? Like, that's unheard of, man. Yeah, and just a comparison for other games that actually sport PvP that you can make a job out of and not even be the best, like Mank, just winning a Dead Man Mode tournament makes him, like, top 1% for sure, if not higher. If you go to Fortnite, you will make yourself a decent living, possibly get into, like, a gamer clan, right? And you could play, like, dog shit, you know? <laughs> That's how much money is out there in other games. League of Legends, you could you could play like dog shit, possibly get into a clan, bro. RuneScape, you are the 
best of your profession. You're leading people to victory. You're you're planning a whole week. You know, you're locking down areas. Yeah, no career. Not one. Not yeah, one yeah, career. You gotta work your nine to five, bro. Zero. Take, take some days bro. off. There is nothing for you, bro. And if you don't make content on YouTube that is like, you know, either you got the best PKs or you make someone smile, you're not getting paid. No one, no one gives a shit. You could stream it, and uh, unless you're like, dude, incredibly popular, you you will not get anywhere, even being the best in your field on old school RuneScape. Dude. Versus, I, mean, I guess, top tier PVMers almost feels like, you know, you got rice down here. It kind of opens up way. You know, you got these people from Oblivion, you know, making careers and getting Twitch clout. You're like, huh, that's that's kind of. Weird, you know, these guys are popping and they deserve the pop, but it's just, it's, it's because they're doing where the content is, honestly. That's it. That's where all the content is, man. PVM at the moment. I think people don't also, like on YouTube, for example, like they don't really want to see, at, at least not on RuneScape, I don't really feel like your skill matters that much. It's more about how you make the video. Like, for example, yeah, if you, if you do the sickest kill, but it's just a regular, like, it, you, you outplay, like, the best of the best type of guy in PvP. You kill him in a sick way, uh, and you do that 20 times over or whatever, and upload that. It's not gonna pop because you're not doing it in a clown suit. <laughs> yeah. No, no music editing, no storytelling to back up. You know, it's like people don't want to click yeah. on that as much. Yeah, it's very rare for you to get a following just because you're good at PvP. You have it, to sell yourself, you know. You gotta be you a marketer. Yeah, 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 you gotta showboat yourself, man. And it's and it's like you ride your own wave. So where you're promoting RuneScape, you're promoting PvP, and then you're promoting yourself. And there's no, there's nobody, you know. It's you're just here, you're solo. Where in other games, they they catch a whiff that you're decent at PvP. They will literally the game itself. Brand new games right now are, are literally hiring people who are. I'm not gonna roast them, but borderline decent at the game. They're like, we'll pay you <laughs> hourly to promote this game, right? Because they understand promoters right. are the future, right? It is with gaming growing, promoters, content creators, they're the only way to get the word out. They're literally paying people, just not just not on RuneScape. I remember one time the uh, RuneScape tried to get people to play the whole two month of Deadman mode. And they're like, we'll get you on a contract. You just gotta stream this every day. And I don't know if anyone signed up for that shit because no one wanted to stream Deadman mode for two months straight. It was, it was too It was kind of dead, you know? Yeah, it was, and it was honestly very dead. And that was the only time I've ever heard of them actually doing something like that. Wait, was that right? for outside content creators, like, who don't play the game? I swear they were giving it to, like, the AOA crew, but I, you gotta ask them. It's not 100% uh. sure. I just remember at the time, it was like, there was an offer on the table to get paid to play Dead Man Mode. And that was the only time I've seen that, other than them paying people outside of the community that one time for them to never play the game like a day or two. Before? Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Nobody from RuneScape. Everybody else outside of it, they played it, they got their views, they got their money. Where the fuck are they now, huh? Where are they at? What happened to that DMM mansion, whatever it was? Oh, uh, I heard oh, it was a yeah, disaster yeah. or something. Oh, that was. It was good, yeah. really. It was bad. It was, <laughs> it was like, it had a lot of potential, because I was actually there for it. It had great potential, um, but it didn't have enough manpower behind it, dude. It was literally like Chris Archie was running two mansions with I, I think 10 content creators in total like the first thing that dude, went wrong poor was Chris Archie man poor Chris the, Archie dude the internet wasn't stable enough for all of us to be like streaming at the same time like we had to take turns we had like shifts it was like okay I'm gonna stream for the next four hours then Sick Nerd and Torvester are gonna stream and it just bro it just it, there just wasn't enough support man like and that's the thing I would love to have Chris Archie on the podcast at some point I think that Considering that he still works there, he probably won't come on until after he leaves uh, the company if, if he does decide to leave. Because I think that knowing the insight of, like, why is it that you were the only person who, who was there, like, supporting two mansions worth of content creators, some of which had been flown out like foe from America, and you couldn't even get, like, the basic... And this was not Chris's fault in any means, man. It's one man. He can only do so much. But, like... Why wasn't there more support there? Like, what what was that about? If you're going to put on a big event, like, don't half-ass it. They were talking about doing something after called, um, and it's not going to happen now, but uh, it was called Dead Man Castles. They were going to literally rent a massive castle somewhere in the UK or wherever, and they were going to have, like, two to three times as many content creators all under one roof doing the same thing. Because the concept was fantastic, but the way that it was... Um, 
brain, God, don't know what the word is. The way that it was logistically done, planned was terrible. It was One, terrible. Yeah. There just wasn't Logistics. enough there wasn't enough support there. It was just like, yeah. yeah, you want to do this idea, go for it. That's all the support you're getting. We we should plan something like that, honestly. Just as content creators outside of RuneScape, go rent out a big house during like events and actually get some good internet and do like our own little own little thing there. Because that was a really cool event. People loved it. I honestly think we as people could probably pull it off a lot better as well. You know? Yeah. I'd love to see that happen. I was going to say, that would sound (laughs) sick. I don't remember that. I wish I did. Right. Um, But it just comes back to that. They say, Jagex just doesn't really care enough, do they? They just throw poor Chris Archie at it, and that's it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, There was, like, rumors about RuneFest being, like, completely cancelled, which... I I thought those were true. Yeah, I can't remember if they got debunked or not, but like regardless, well, it's I, like... I can I can touch on that because at this point it's basically like public knowledge. So, um, it was it was actually me who unintentionally those rumors went out, right? So uh, I recently <laughs> Wait, went to what? yeah, I know, <laughs> what dude, I, fuck, dude? I know, I know. I haven't I haven't really spoken about this, but it's all cool now. Basically, I went to a fest, uh, a gaming expo called Insomnia. I ran into Boaty. Haven't seen him in years, man. It was awesome to see him. And um, we were just talking. I was like, man, it sucks that we don't do this anymore. Because we used to meet up, like, us content creators, like, every couple months. Uh, and we would have continued doing so if it wasn't for COVID. And uh, he said to me, he was basically the person that said that he had heard rumors from um, reliable sources from Inside Jagex that RuneFest was going to be discontinued indefinitely. Um, which obviously sucks because it's so nice, like, meeting your fellow content creators, meeting your communities. RuneFest is awesome. Like, it, it's a great time to be able to meet p- people that play the game and especially meeting people who, like, watch your content. As a content creator, it, it's great. It really is. So, um, basically, we spoke, and I, me and him, and uh, we said it would be a pretty cool idea if we then turned Insomnia, this gaming expo in Birmingham, into, like, the new RuneFest if RuneFest were to be discontinued. So I made a Twitter DM, invited originally just the UK content creators because I wanted to see if there were actually people that were down to come. Um, And then screenshots got taken from the DM, posted in public, uh, which is, you know, it's fine. I wasn't expecting it, but uh, something did good did come from it. I'm pretty sure Foe tweeted about it, and then somebody that was high up in Jagex replied to it saying that it wasn't true. So, oh. it, yeah, at this point, it seems like, I guess, that RuneFest is still happening. Maybe not this oh, year, it though. It better still be happening. That's the only reason you can meet other content creators on this game. Only yeah. reason. So, Which card? I, I will add, by the way, the reason why it was uh, being discontinued, from what I could tell, was uh, it doesn't make Jagex money. But the thing is, like, that, you know, that is what it is. Like, it does so much more for the game, Right. If the expo itself, RuneFest, doesn't make the game Jagex money, but it's like, do you know how much that, like, solidifies communities in the game and, like, people's passion and love for the community? Like, it just, it, it's so good. If any of you guys haven't been, you should definitely go. But, yeah, that that was where all the rumors came from. It was it was me. <laughs> it was me. I remember, what was it? It was, like, RuneFest 2019, where there was, like, there was meant to be, like, an open bar for nothing but the content creators, and then, like, piss weeks, like, myself, somehow, just got in, and, like, loads of more people just got in, and everyone was just fucking enjoying the free bar, essentially. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why they're not making any money. <laughs> uh, yeah, the drinks. Oh. But yeah, I, I really hope that um, the rumors aren't true, and I hope that RuneFest does continue, man. I don't think it's going to happen this year, because it usually happens around, like, August. And I oh, think yeah, definitely heard, not this year. It's we would have heard something by year. now. So. But on the note of Insomnia, if anybody watching this uh, wants to go at the moment, and I'm pretty sure you boys, or the UK boys here, Dino, not sure about West Ham, because I'm not sure if you're from the UK, were invited into the group. At the moment, I think there is myself, Solo Mission, Rise, uh, the uh, Tanzo, Fratoso boys, and Boti, and Sweet Badass as well, I believe, that are confirmed to be going to Insomnia I-69. So it'd be good to see you. You should come. When is it? Uh, it's in August. I think it's August the 26th to 29th. So it's a weekend. And uh, we, we've I got... maybe. We, we've we've already booked an Airbnb, so if you do want to uh, get involved, like just message me or Soto Mission, and we'll, we'll sort it out. 
Yeah. Tom, are you going to record it, bro? Are you going to make a little vlog and hand out OSRS uh, podcast bro, scan? I'm, I'm literally, shit, I'm going to be with my phone the whole time, like in everybody's face, like, motherfucker, get on my vlog. Nah, yes, I'm not like yes, <laughs> dude, that's how we do you know, like how OSRS gets its um, guests. It is just rapey, just absolutely. <laughs> that is not, <laughs> you gotta that get is, out of here. That is not how you do it, dude. <laughs> I just, please, uh, that'd be great. Please, video. sir. <laughs> please, no. sir. But, but yeah, that, that's where all that came from. So hopefully, it's bro, not what true. the fuck were we talking about again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but dude, don't listen, know. I feel like there's been a lot of doom and gloom in this podcast, man. Boys, what do we have to look forward to for PvP? Like, is, is there a silver lining to the future of the wilderness PvP? I... Is Bounty Hunter coming back? What, what's happening? Let's, let's hear some positive stuff, yeah? Dude, personally, I think the best thing for the wild has been the Rev Boss, and it's the best mechanics I've ever seen in the wilderness, so the very least... We have that. It's not good money. No one wants to farm it. It's usually empty. But when they do, there's fucking magic, okay? So it was something. They gave it us was, something. It was something, bro. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, did that get pulled or what? No, I don't actually think so. No, they, they just got to stick to that. They just got to stick to that a bit. I, I'll be honest with you. Because I, I've, I've personally, as a PVM, I've given up on the whole polling system, man. Basically, anything that benefits the majority of people, it's gonna, ha- it's gonna be a yes, right? It, it's, it's like the poll is, it's not really a poll of like critical thinking. It's a poll of the most obvious, you know? So it doesn't really do a whole lot. For, why for why us, didn't they you know? poll the membership changes? Yeah. I feel like, uh. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Just they should have polled that. those high. I don't know. It's kind of fucked up. Record breaking profits. <laughs> Game is down the fucking blender, and they go, yeah, let's raise the price. Why not? <laughs> yeah, bro. Did man, there was a video somewhere I saw where it's like Jagex was getting sold again, but I don't think I watched it. Does, does anyone know if someone's buying Jagex again? I From saw it. I don't know. Yeah. It's confirmed. Yo, you know, you know, you know. Here's the here's the deal. You know, because like the, these investors, man, they they probably know what what things about this game makes this game currently safe and stable profits, right? And that's basically the PVM skilling side, right? So I think a lot there's probably a lot of pressure for the for Jagex to, you know, keep making sure they pump out that consistent money. And that's probably why they're like going so slow with the whole PvP because they don't know if they can ever bring it back to like a a, a profitable state for them, right? It's there, there's a, definitely money involved. Yeah. There's definitely money involved, right? Because like the you know these investors they're just, you know, they're just looking for money. They, they don't give a fuck about really our our innovations in the game or how how to, you know, make make the game more variety again, right? They don't care about that stuff. They just want to, you know, milk the game for a few years and then sell it again. And that's yep. one of those underlining issues that we have that it's hard to notice that's happening, but it's definitely happening. Yeah, yeah, and I think every, that's for sure. You know, making every it really time they get work. sold, they raise the membership. It's just a new board, and they're like, should we fucking? Fifteen dollars a month? What are you guys taking? Yeah, all right. And they sell. It's like, oh, twenty dollars a month. Next thing you got like forty dollars yeah, a month membership. There's like one tree in Barack. There's like ten people taking a turn on it. It's just garbage. Yeah. So, so it's it's really hard. I I, I imagine, um, you know, for Jags themselves to you know for uh, out of their own like passion to bring back the PvP because then they're they're constantly being tugged by these executives. You know that they're trying to see some more results on their finances. You know, uh, yeah. every year because all they care about is. The profits gotta be higher than last year, you know. It's it's that's, not a safe business move, hard. man. It's not yeah, a safe and business move. It like that's that's what it boils down to. It's a risk, yeah, the, and you know, you know, and, like and for, companies and, don't do that. Yeah, and us as a community, we 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 have we should we should like uh, you know we, like the more mature ones, we should understand that's happening this tug of war. So the best way we can do it is when we offer suggestions, we are professional about it. We you know we don't start talking shit about it because it, it makes it extra hard. For, for them to, you know, want to push it for us, right? So, like, you know, if there, if you want something to happen, like, for example, if you want, like, revs change, I feel like the revs change is very, um, you know, it's beneficial for everybody. Like, it, it's not contradictory to certain players. Everybody gets a little bit of everything, right? I feel like just starting there, if people can really push that and in a respectful manner, I think you might get something to spark again, right? And then maybe start, you know, start that uh, snowball effect. But right now, you know, it's like, if if people are are just very aggressive about it and they're not being professional with, you know, uh, nudging Jagex to do something like that, I don't think we're gonna get anywhere. But there's hope. There's still hope because they can do stuff without polls. Yeah. But I think we just have to really be patient and like be respectful about, you know, pitching these ideas. You know. Yeah. 
Uh, by the I way, like I, there needs to be a spark. Like, I, I want to add, I, this probably goes without, you know, mentioning for most people, but if anyone listening to this doesn't know, like, when we refer to Jagex doing these things, in no way, shape, or form are we, like, targeting the JMods, who are the public figures and faces of the game, okay? Like, we're not talking about them. We're talking about, like, the the overlords, the corporate side of things, who focus on profits. Like, you know, they they are the people who effectively are pulling the strings, okay? So can please. We get, can like, we get them on the podcast, dude? The man, I wish. Dude, I, wish. <laughs> dude, I think, I don't care, know. Dude, don't well, care. I mean, we probably could, but we'd have to learn, like, Mandarin. I mean, Re would be perfect for it, but I don't no, know. No, no, bro. Can we, can we, <laughs> fake, bro? we just get, like, a little shadow and a voice. <laughs> and there goes Dino. Oh, Dino's gone. <laughs> <laughs> get your dark, cam back bro. on, man. <laughs> they oh, heard us, dude. dude. They heard us. <laughs> Yeah. Yo, yo, yeah. You need, okay. There we go. I, He's back. I think we're back. There we go. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just, I just wanted. To, yeah, I just wanted. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that just in case there is anyone out there that isn't really into the old school Inkscape community as much as we are. It's yeah, the like, lore. You know. Yeah, the J mods aren't to blame here in, in any way, no. shape, or form. Like there is no blame to be placed. It's just well, you know, it is what it is. And when I and when I talk about J mods, you know, I I usually bring up. I don't ever single anyone out. I'll just say that they need to do PvP if they want to update PvP. I'll bring that up a lot. Um, but I, it's not a roast on them. I can see why they wouldn't want to do it. It's fucking dead. But if we're going to want a better wild, then we're going to need some of those J-Mods to start going out in the wild and actually uh, trying to play and seeing what's wrong with it. That's the only time I will ever talk about J-Mods mainly, but I don't single anyone out. I don't say it's a bad thing, and I kind of understand not wanting to be in the wild. But it is their job. They need to be out there. Well, I would say on a bit of a brighter note, um, from what Jane Woods have said in my Twitch chat and going from what uh, Rates he asked and from Twitter, I think they are planning to get Bounty Hunter back. Um, I think by the end of this year. Um, I don't want to be the guy that says it and it doesn't happen and everyone starts roasting me, you know. But I'm fairly sure from what Jane Woods have said, they want it back and they are trying to get it back. There's no, like, final plan for it. Um, but again, that just shows the JMods are trying to revive it. It's just they do kind of, with the updates they could do at the moment, they just lack the experience. But yeah. they are trying their best. Do, do you uh, believe that uh, Bounty Hunter would would be good if they brought it back? Like, is that the best approach for their time? Again, it's the different types of PK. And I never really done too much Bounty Hunter, but I think bringing Bounty Hunter 1 back, like how it was re- originally, oh I don't think it's wrong with that, personally. Bro, that'd be amazing. Um, wait, wait, wait. Are you talking now, about Crater? Bounty Hunter? Or are you talking about... Uh, Bounty Hunter 1, the old school. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm old school. Craters, I, I remember doing Craters, but I can't remember them well enough to have an opinion on it, I'm afraid. Oh, oh, yeah. Dude, craters if I... were kind of busted, I'm not going to lie. Bro, listen, West Ham, I got this in my brain. I quickly need to say this. I was around at that time, okay? I did Craters. That was when I had... I saw you! I was watching a video! I'm like, is that fucking Rakesy, dude? They uh, like his name. Block IP or... video, Dragon Claw, or whatever. Yeah, he killed me, bro. It was wasn't me on the account. Me. I wasn't even on no. the account, just saying. Okay? <laughs> dude, no, 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 no. It was another video. I was watching old school oh, videos. Really? I just see your ass pop up. Yeah, I think I was watching Lord Makeup or something. And he right clicks uh, uh, some dude. And it was fucking Rakesy. Dude! <laughs> Oh no, that. bro! That <laughs> you know that that guy. I'm not gonna say his name. That YouTuber hated me, bro. Like he hated me so bad. There are two videos <laughs> yeah, he made that were dedicated to me. Made on you in 2008. <laughs> yeah, dude, he hates me. He made two videos solely dedicated to me. Like he did not like me at all. It's a love letter. Right, oh, but, damn. Th- right. Kiss this is guy. you died this is on PB. Like that's that's a respectable death. Yeah, and also, we'll mention, that was the week that Dragon Claws were first introduced into the game. They were fucking way more powerful than they are now. They did nerf them without saying anything, and they just hit crazy numbers. And nobody crazy. knew, nobody had ever been attacked by four hits in that kind of rapid speed, okay? Just just saying. You don't it wasn't even, make excuses, it wasn't even right? me. Okay. It wasn't me on the account, bro. It's Grim Reaper 44. You can watch the video yourself. Okay, it wasn't hey, whenever I die, it's always not me too. So I Bro, that, man. Do, you know really, do you know what really annoyed me about that video, by the way? Side tangent. This block and PV video that I died in, he kills kids for like a stack of 999 Dragon Arrows, Dragon Bolt C. This is when they were like, I think Dragon Bolt C were like 10k each, oh right? Full bandos and everything. And like the only kill that he zooms in on the loot is my shitty ass where he gets a Fury and a Saradoman sword. Why? I was like, dude, like, is it really that notable? Anyways, 
Bounty Hunter creators, when they first came out, here's the deal. Mm. People hated it, right? Firstly, it came I out and it, it. it was, it was literally just completely multi, which was terrible. But when they changed it and they made it into singles, that's when it was acceptable, right? The problem with Bounty Hunter Creator when it first came out was we went from having the entire wilderness to being able to kill anybody everywhere whenever you want it to then being restricted into not only a tiny area, but you were also then like put into brackets depended on your combat level. So people didn't like the change, admittedly. But when you actually look back at it, the actual fundamentals of how uh, the Bounty Hunter Creator worked... It wasn't terrible. Like, it was actually a pretty well thought out idea. There wasn't really an incentive outside of just killing the person that you are targeted to or whoever it is to get their loot. There wasn't really a reward system. There was a really small amount of GP that you got, like, every 10 kills in the Bounty Hunter Crater. But it was like a mill or something like that. Like, it wasn't, you know, statuettes or anything like that. That's my opinion on it. I think that's why I got a lot of flack, is because people were restricted when they had the whole wilderness previously. What were you going to say, West Ham? Huh? Oh, I thought you, you were going. I thought you were going to say something about BH Crayers. <laughs> Man, oh, Randy T. Log. I just went right out the head, bro. I completely zoned out of that one. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I looked at Crayers and like the the actual information about Crayers when they first were released, and I, it's kind of. Um, so the way they used to work was apparently you would get assigned a target, but that the guy who you got assi- assigned to kill w- wouldn't get you as well. He could get someone completely different. Yeah. And at the same time, if you killed someone that wasn't your target, you just wouldn't be able to leave for three minutes. That was only if you took something off the floor. Yes, but yeah. like, are you gonna get a kill and then you just not loot it? Or um, what would you do? Time, you bank and then come out and like yeah, yeah. here, and, it was, and then you yeah. have to find it. And like, that, that's what you know. do. You, you'd kill somebody. You'd get the penalty. As soon as you get the penalty, you couldn't protect item anymore, but you could still leave as long as you didn't pick anything up. So what you'd usually do is you'd kill somebody, leave, take all your gear off, throw on a tank setup, run back in, loot it, and try to tank it. Or you were in a team and you didn't have to do any of that. You just took the stuff and you just sat with your boys in the middle and just farmed people that tallied into you. Like, that was it. <laughs> I yeah, remember well. that very distantly. I remember grabbing some loot and then, yeah, just being a... Con- I had no idea how it worked. Like, so I, I played then, but I was a noob. Um, I remember killing, I think it was like a, for a dragon longsword or something, and I was just hiding, and I was, because sh- I didn't realize you couldn't leave, so I remember trying to leave, and I started panicking, I was like, why can't I get out of it? <laughs> um, but I remember, uh, I remember, I have fond memories of it, but that might be me, like, just looking at it from someone who didn't really know what was going on. Um, yeah. yeah. I was very mainly a free-to-play PK then, so, I when I got to... membership, I was, yeah. I used to use it to split God Wars loot because you couldn't trade, so like you had to like kill your your teammates for their uh, Sarah, I, you know, God rune armor, so you can split it, split yeah. the drop box. I, I mean, it was like five mil for a full Saradome and rune set back yeah. then. So you just hopped to free to play bounty hunter, and you did that until you paid your friend back whatever the oh, split so was, annoying. because Dude. you could still die, man. But it would be dudes with like Addy arrows and rune two handers like smashing. Uh, dude, to I lost it. the set because I got I got hit by like too many people <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the timer. No, but like speaking yeah. of the normal bounty hunter, right? Like the the main reason they they took it off was because people started. Uh, you know, like creating a bunch of accounts to farm it, but like I feel like that's easily solvable. They just have one guy that just monitors the place, you know, and just deletes them, right? Like seriously, do, do, do you think that's really hundred, viable? Bro, for real? Do, do you? I, I I don't know if that's completely viable. They need they need a small team, I think, and let's be realistic. I mean, why they? why not? Honestly, you know, I know, but you could say that about You could say that you could say that about account security, right? Why not? Yeah, but, you know still hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. If they're not going to update PvP, they're not going to give it a support system. Well, that's, that's what they would need way. because, let's be honest, if they put out the body hunter thing again and they don't deal actively deal with the people that are making 20 accounts to farm the emblems, the, yeah. it's going to go back to, oh, I, we got to you know, delete it again. So like, you know? that, that's a really good point. Are they planning on changing they anything? Have to. To the they have to tackle it. Untrainable well, the thing is, rewards, most likely. But the thing is, too. right? The thing is, no matter how you do it, like if you want to make the bounty hunter actually popular, there's gonna be ways for people to create those mules to farm. But but you need an actual active countermeasure for that. It's not like redesign because like if you try like you know you know how they kept trying to bring back bounty hunter in like twenty different ways, and always it would fail because 
it would just delete like one of the fundamentals of like the that mini game, right? And then people don't like it. But the only way to make it work, it also just means there will be mewling involved, right? So they need a way to actually like you know like some sort of agent that like literally deletes those accounts like as like as it's you know happening. It's the only way, honestly. Dude, it sounds like they need like another tier of player moderator, where it's they, like they really almost, to, so. almost like bot detector or something like that, or like where they can report somebody and it's not like they're banned, but it's definitely looked at high priority. By an actual yeah, it's person. like high priority or something. They yeah. just got to get a bunch of people on Fiverr, give them JMod accounts, spread them throughout <laughs> the wild, and see what the fuck happens, dude. Because you know, they, they, yeah, I'm thinking like they really need like a professional Sherlock Holmes job, like a few people, you know, just a few of them, right? Where all they do is they investigate different places, and then they they they, they disc- you know show their findings to like the the you know the freaking people that ban the accounts. And like I feel like it'd be so much cleaner because you know they you need people that are resourceful that knows what to look for things. Like I mean the bounty hunter one's obvious because once you bring it out for sure those people will be back, right? So that one's like you don't even need Sherlock Holmes for that one, right? right? Just anybody that can monitor. But but yeah, that just get the snitch from recess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, just just get one of those guys, man. They're good. What his name started like an M or something? It was like Maurice or some shit. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking awful. Awesome. Remember if it was fucking no yeah. fat out. Now, nah, seriously though, if they're gonna bring back Bounty Hunter. They need they need some people to like monitor it, or else it's it's gonna be the same issue again. And it's like, what's the point? You know? Honestly. If Jagex can't get a team, they could do something with like like uh, you said, like another kind of like a P mod thing where they give like trusted people. The ability not to ban people, but like stop them from getting a target for like five hours or something. And if they gave that to like trusted, like, I don't know, creators and people who want to do that, and obviously if it got abused, they could then either ban them from doing it. Yeah. Um, but I thought that would be kind of reasonable. Like, what, yeah, yeah, there has to be a way to, you know, stop those guys. Well, the, the kind of the cool way about Sir Pugger's videos is he makes content out of catching people doing things they shouldn't be. So what if they made it so that there was some sort of content. Like, you got extra PvP. Like, you could kill them on any account. Or I don't know. If some, if some of those people, P-Mods, just flagged somebody, it's like anyone could attack this person at all times. And you could have people running around trying to find these people and, and just fucking them up. And it would be content. And you'd upload it, slapping up bots who got flagged or something like that. If we make it content, they don't have to hire people. It'll just become an ecosystem, and those bots will be flushed out over time. I could just imagine an in-game message. Keb Q has flagged a bot farm northeast of the wilderness. Wouldn't that be <laughs> fucking cool, bro? Oh, uh, this guy's uh, charging. <laughs> <laughs> a whole map just starts going, like, east or something. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah they, sh- they they already know the, you know, the, the ups and downs of the bounty hunters, so hopefully they actually bring it back in a way that, that you know, they, they deal with the problem this time. So Instead of, like... Was she washing it like they did before, like the twentieth time rendition yeah. to twenty, like fifth rendition never works. Yeah, it seems like everyone here is pretty hype about Bounty Hunter. I feel like I'm the only one who's like, I will want any PvP update and I will play it when it comes out. But it is not on my mind. It is not on my. It hasn't been on my mind, bro. Right? It, yeah. it's not even a thought about Bounty Hunter. I want something to do deep wild. Right, because if Bounty yeah. Hunter comes out, okay, I'll teleport to somebody, depending on how much money you can make. But how long is that going to last? It doesn't really feel um, organic either, right? It's fun. You can get little battles. There's su- there's sweet times to be had. But I, I want to sit deep wild and go farm some people doing some shit. Dude, you know? I, 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 t- I totally agree. I enjoy that a lot more. But at this point, I just want PKers to have something, bro. I, I literally yeah. don't care. I want them to have something. You know. No. I really agree. Deep Wildy, for me, I've always preferred Deep Wildy. Um, but Bounty Hunter was a big... thing is, Bounty Hunter was a good way to get into PKing as well, because, like, the Edge Ditch PKing was a lot simpler than Tribridin, like an h in. And I feel like Jagex's focus at the moment is on Tribrid and H, which is probably the hardest thing to learn. So it's like getting someone who's never done something before to do the m- most difficult style of PKing, whereas having, like, Bounty Hunter, we know it's like Magic Shortbow Gmules. That's how I learned. That's how, like, a lot of people got into it. So I feel like that would be a big help uh, to get new players in. Yeah, for real. They just gotta they gotta find a way for them, like maybe spread bounty hunter on a couple worlds, and then have those areas in the wild be incredibly active for PVMers, right? So that there's something for them to go in and do. You know, Man. maybe it'll be like four or five worlds. You get like a decent amount of loot. Like we're talking good, something that would not be added. We all know, but decent amount. So you can go and farm these people. And, I don't Bro. know, just farming PKers, 
there's it's it's not it's fun but it gets boring it's, but farming pvmers who can like farm like Laren's keys or something cool and you get a little i don't know it just it's easier for people to get into and it builds yeah I, yeah I, they just have to make sure the pvmers have a reason to like mm-hmm. when they die not to be so angry and they go back up which will come down to money if, I hope so. If the PVM is making enough money, they won't mind if they die every now and again because they would just go back and try and make some more. Yeah. But, um, like, you guys heard of the uh, GE sales tax, right? And then the burning? I don't know if that entered the game. Does anyone know? Did that yeah, actually the, come sales, the sales tax already has been Okay, a okay. For a so, what if they did now? something like a wilderness tax, where it's just the money that's being taken out of the wild now already, maybe more on top of certain areas as long as they buff them, and then that money goes into like a vault that buys back wilderness items and just burns the money or something. Like, just buys back from people. So you got all this money, and it's going to also dip into wilderness items. Maybe it doesn't even have to be, um, like, resources. Maybe it could just be, like, EGSs or, or ballistas and, and shit like that, to where more money that's getting burned in the wild is also burning PvP items, which in, in turn makes shit more valuable to go back out in the wild. You know? I don't know. I was just thinking that the whole time. I want to bring it up. I mean, they could. Yeah, I, I was just thinking um, for the Bounty Hunter rework, man, imagine if they applied the uh, the same structure for Bounty Hunter Craters, but to Bounty Hunter, but having it in the old school layout. So effectively, the BH world, you go into the wilderness, uh, if you kill somebody who's not your target, you have a three minute penalty where you can't protect item, right? Maybe you get flagged with like a red skull or something like that. If you take something, you're then bound to staying in the worldy for three minutes, and you can have, like, two to three people jump on you and attack you all at the same time, and you have to try to tank it out. Like, exactly the, exactly <laughs> the same... Like so people losing their plus one. Yeah, but, one. I'd be yeah. Done for that. <laughs> Dude, I think it would be an interesting um, approach on it, and it may counter some of the, uh, the issues with botting, I guess. I'm not really too sure, but... I don't know. I, I just think you're right. If they bring BH out the same way it was, like... I, I feel like if they're going to bring it out the same as it was, they might as well just not bring it out. Unless they come to terms with the fact that the amount of gold that was being farmed by these bot farms mm-hmm. isn't that substantial for them not to remove it in the future, then fine. Because that's kind of the reason they did it, right? Was because there was too much GP coming into the game through these bot farmers. But, like, was it really that damaging to the economy? I guess. But they never disclosed how much it would be or, you know, just how hurtful it was. I, I just think if they are going to the old bounty hunter, they just need a team to monitor it. And yeah, I, I think people would literally do that. That's literally um, it, man. Even if they didn't hire a team, like if they just got a team of creators, like say I was streaming Deep Wildy and someone said like, yo, these guys are boosting and I could go down there and use like a rotten potato on them, which prevented them from getting a target for five hours. If enough people were doing that, they wouldn't boost it because they would keep getting interrupted. It was just because they was getting left alone, you know, they were just making so much yeah, money. Yeah, that's crazy. On the flip side of things, though, one mistake, and that would make a massive controversy. True. Yeah. Very true, yeah. True. It's... Well, no, like, the thing is, you should have the ability to, like, re- like I don't know, they just need a system where where you're, you're guaranteed know that if you reported them, they would have, there's actual high priority, and they would, like... The next day, you, you log in. These guys are not there anymore. Yeah, you know I mean, like, like it, yeah, it shows the webcam of the JMod on, and it shows them reading the fucking review, <laughs> and then it screen shares them banning the account. And I think we'd have ourselves a successful system. Yeah, it's not that hard. It's it's not like there's hundreds of people running it. It's literally just like a few dudes that are just running scripts, right, on on all, all these accounts. You just take care of them, and then they're they're done. They got to move on to some other bullshit. You know, it's really that simple. It's yeah. literally just those few people running it. it and yeah. all they do is you got to stop them. Man, do you, do you know, recently so. I discovered in, like, so I, I stopped playing PvP, like I said, quite a while back. I play other games now for my PvP fix, and one of the games I play is Escape from Tarkov. And I only just discovered the people that cheat in Escape from Tarkov, uh, and basically the game has the same philosophy and concept as the wieldy. If you die, you lose all your stuff, right? That's what makes it, like, attractive to me. But if you cheat on that game, uh, you get hardware banned. Which means if you want to play again, you got to buy a new computer, man. Like, ain't that some shit? Can you imagine if they did that in RuneScape? Like, that'd be insane. Well, you know... They do that, don't they? I think they IP ban, don't they? Well, I mean, you can still you can still use, like, a VPN and bypass that, though. Yeah. So, yeah, they just need to actively 
you know, ban, ban those accounts, you know? Yeah. That show up for the muting. It's, I mean, that's the only way, unfortunately, you know? And that's that's a way, whole, but... like, different yeah. can of worms, though, because yeah. they, people will openly cheat. Uh, like on They'll stream it mu- for months at a time. <laughs> Eventually, enough content creators are, are like, "All right, what the fuck is going on? Like, do something." And then they ban, like, let's say, I don't know, may- maybe fifty percent of all the cheaters that we had seen uh, over that certain period of time. They disappear for like another six months. Don't do anything about them, and then the same thing happens again. The content uh, content creators just go, "What the fuck is going on? Do something." And it just, it just repeats in that cycle. It's not a steady, like, continuous ban way that's going on. It's more like, I don't know, every once in a blue moon, they'll ban a load of them and then let them go back to what they were doing before. Do you think they track their membership? They're like, okay, 10,000 bots just started day one. Let's sweep them. <laughs> like, they just fucking wait to get that <laughs> membership money, and then they sweep them. And that's why you see these people randomly getting banned. I don't think PvP cheaters are, like... I was talking about PvP cheaters. Yeah. I was just talking yeah. about boss and shit, my bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I mean, I think PV, in PvP, the the problem with cheaters has become like a big, like a way bigger problem than what you ever could have imagined. But it mainly affects the people who do high risk stuff. So there was a period where they went went to deep wild, but now they have just started to. Are you guys aware of like the death matching going on in high risk worlds? Well, like very weird. Gamble? Very weird. Could you give an explanation for the viewers though? Since the duel arena was um banned, they can't stake anywhere. Yeah, so, so du- the duel arena got removed. That obviously people will always find a way to gamble, right? And one of the loopholes to gambling was through death matching, which I mean, you you could do that before as well, but with the duel arena there, there wasn't really any point. So people move to high risk worlds where you gear up in, let's say, full DH with maybe prims, torture. Uh, if you want to do some extra risk, you can have a middleman, which is where it becomes bannable. If you involve a middleman, it is bannable. Uh, or you could just have the cash on you, for example. Both of the players step out in the exact same gear and there is no guarantee other than trust. That's all <laughs> you're relying on. No. Uh, so. I did an entire video where I, like I that was, yeah, I was just killing the death matches. Like I, I was rushing them because obviously they're they're still stepping out into a PvP zone, which leaves me like the opportunity to either like claw gmail them or I could try TB entangle them. So I did that, and like whilst I, I was doing that for like two three weeks, and like fifty percent, probably more, probably more of like the death matches that I saw that actually went through that I didn't manage to like interrupt. They they all get like so many were just scamming, and that that entire scene is just so. It, it's such a like garbage filled community. It's <laughs> it so really bad. is, bro. I was watching what? a video of of this dude, and I was like, "What's he doing? He just keeps fighting people with prims and claw sculpt." But the thing is, he was getting kills, and I didn't know why. And I saw his envy; he was doing risk fights. And apparently, he would eat venge and just cheat barely to where he won every time. The man made like four bill in the video and all he did was just eat Man. one food every fight and they just kept magic of up bro <laughs> people just keep doing it as well um and i there was there was like a little bit of a problem before i did it or like during the time that i was making this video but after i made the video as well so many more cheaters started to come like e- even while i was making it there was me and one other person who was like legit uh legitimate players rushing them right all the other ones, I'd, I'd say there was probably about maybe six or eight of them. All of them were just blatantly cheating. They would go from like full ma- like ancestral or whatever to doing an eight way switch, claw G mauling them instantly, stuff like that. Stuff that is so obviously cheating, but nothing got done about it. They like I spoke to them as well. They probably made like thirty, forty bill before they got banned on one account. That's crazy. I mean, I wonder if, and this is this is just one of those conspiracy theories, but you know, J mods, man. How many times <laughs> in the past couple of years have they been doing some 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 freaky shit, bro? Like, what happened with the uh, the court boss? Huh? An infinite G mod glitch, dude. All right, what? Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, they're they're rocking those PK accounts with the AHKers and they're just dumping spec on the people. I don't know. It sounds like too much, but you're never getting a T-shirt, man. I'm like, never getting never. a T-shirt, bro. 
It's never <laughs> but happening. But there's so many things that happen in the game that you can make so much money off of doing like sketchy shit that don't get patched for a while. And I'm like, why would you not patch this shit? One, you don't know about it, or two, maybe you're making money off it. That's the only reasons, right? So yeah, it's it's just sad as well because like people like me, then um, a lot of like I was streaming a lot of this, uh, and then I made a YouTube video, of course, which got a load of attention. Um, and then people are like, oh, why don't you do that again? Like, just do it. It, it was so fun to watch. Do it again. And it's just like, but I don't want to compete versus six other people that are using clients. Like, it, it's so hard to compete versus that when that's my competition. How am I meant to do it better than them when everything they do is just automated? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you heard any updates on what, the botting or not that the age gang problem at all? I mean, Webster. like I said, they they keep doing this thing, but they just like they'll ban a couple people if you report them enough, or like if enough Twitter uh, attention is received. But um, if it shouldn't if I'm, be like, like private, that, man. It shouldn't if be I'm, like, like that. If I'm like privately DMing the J mods, nothing happens. Pretty mm. much, it, it's yeah. very very rare that someone mm. that I report gets banned unless I make a tweet about it. And then that tweet all also has to get a load of attention. Yeah, Otherwise, they have to do damage control. Yeah. You got to really pull their leg. That sucks, man. I was hoping, you know, there's always a little bit of hope in my, my brain that they're just fixing something at all times. And I, I thought maybe they, they really know what the fuck they're doing with these guys. But apparently uh, they're just running these Whoa. AI PK bots. And the longer they ran, the smarter they get. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. I think Dino could agree on that as well, because the, the people that went to the high-risk worlds were the people that were in Rev Caves previously. And when they first came, they were very, very killable. Like, you could easily take them down. And then yeah. as, like, the clients progressed, you, they like, they started killing us, and it was just like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, from what I, again, I don't know all behind it, with the clients in Rev Caves, the, the sort of first wave of them, they had really good switches, but you could tell they were bad PKs because they would just sit at like 30 HP and not even try and eat. Um, and then you kill them and you get like 500 mil. So it was like nice to fight them. But then as they progress, they, I believe their clients can eat for them now. Like if they just, if, it, if the client detects that they're about to take damage, it does like a triple eat or something. <laughs> um, oh it's just God. impossible. Yeah. But again, I, I will say Jagat didn't used to ban them, but this year they have banned quite a lot of them. But all they do is buy another account um, cause they make so much money from it. They don't care if they get banned. They buy another account and then they just back out it the next day. So, so, you know, you know, the whole client stuff, like it's a crazy, uh, you know, crazy topic, but, but like the idea is though, you know, they're working on their own stuff now, right? They're trying to like create like an actually good official client. Last I time mean, they said that we got the steam client. Yeah, but they're, you know, they're still updating it a lot, which, which is a good sign. Right? They're, they're updating <laughs> okay. it a ton every month. I'll take you know? for it. I mean, I don't know exactly how it works. I don't know, like, you know, the, the exact coding and all that, but I just assume it's based off, you know, all these clients are probably based off of the rune light when they decided to make it all public. You know, that's how, like, it all started is when yeah. the rune light devs were like, yeah, man, we have this all public. Everybody can edit on it, which was a terrible mistake. And I feel like that's probably, you know, where all these, like, Roy clients are an extension from. So maybe in the future, if, if you know, all this, like, updating their actual client is something to do with it, maybe, maybe they'll just, yeah, like the whole, what was it, uh, the, the Jagex launcher thing that they're doing? Maybe it's their way of shutting down all these clients in, in the coming, you know, I don't know, I, years or so. I hope so, man. Because, yeah. you know, just to, just to get into how crazy advanced It's getting too crazy. Are, it's right? getting too crazy. So they yeah. need to do something. Because, you know, Dino and West Ham, they, they both know these, these things scale over time. And it's kind of funny. Maybe LMS was the, the nail in, in the fucking casket for PvP. Cause what, what they do is they get this PvP bot and they'd leave it at LMS and it would fucking learn. Okay. We're talking it would learn. All right. An example would be if you ever watch speedruns, there's people who speedruns old, old games and they do it for some uh, charity sometime and they get a Taz bot. They literally just dump this Tazbot in a game, and it learns the video game. And then all of a sudden, four million plays later, speedrunners are literally like getting notes off this thing. It's like, how do I beat this game fast? So let's pop up the Tazbot, see if it's fit. That's what's happening with PKers, bro. We're fucking taking notes from these things, man. They are so high up. And, and I just gotta say, I don't know if they're ever gonna get fixed. Maybe we're at a certain point where technology is just 
we're not going to keep up, including yeah, we, RuneScape. Yeah, it's team. an arms race, man. They ha- you have to they have to what basically the try arms to on Jagex side. Bro? Yeah, yeah, Where? they have to. I don't know, man, because like the whole launcher thing. If, if you know, like I said, I'm speaking out my ass, but like if this launcher thing is is partially designed to make it so that you, you they can only you can only access RuneScape through that at some point. And of course, the client from that is like good enough, like it's room light kind of thing. Then uh, it would probably slow down a, a massive a ton, right? And, until maybe some crazy guy just dis- knows how to hack that program. But I don't. I think we were all hoping for that until we I, saw I the hope. Steam client, <laughs> and then that hope kind of went from, well, it's. I still possible. feel like the Steam client is not <laughs> the the full shebang. You know, I think that's just kind of like. Don't like, even know why it exists. Man, I, I, I've heard the Steam client though. Like, Jesus, I, I've, dude, dude, I've heard <coughs> that the Steam <laughs> client's really like unsecure. I've had people telling me they're getting hacked through it and stuff. Like what's it, up it with is that? because uh, yeah. Jagex. I mean, Jagex probably should have gone out and said as well that there's no two factor, is there? Connect, yeah, if you connect your RuneScape account to the Steam client, uh, there's nothing that stops them from just accessing your Steam and immediately logging into your RuneScape account. Like, oh, wow. it bypasses the RuneScape Authenticator as far as I'm aware, and the only way to prevent that is to add Authenticator to your Steam instead. But, I mean, a load, a load of people didn't know that, so they didn't have 2FA on Steam, for example, and just had their Steam accounts hacked, and then, as a, like, I, don't, I guess, consequence of that, they would get their RuneScape accounts uh, hacked as well. Mm. Yeah. It's it's sad, but it's also, like, in my, in my mind, it's funny to see that they... We're like, I gotta try a Steam client out. It's gonna be great. They play it. We all know how that is. And then they get hacked. You know, it's like going to watch a, a movie on the new Batman and then you watch it and you get mugged in the theater. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a, the most trash situation, bro. Not only do you get the experience of Steam client, your money gets fucking taken, bro. Ah, oh, man. But I'm, no more for me. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm on a, yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying, it. like, I, you know what I mean? Like, this, the, the clients are getting crazy, so. They do need to find a way to like just like universally block them, you know, from yeah, entering. Yeah. But like, there's almost no distinguishing them and Rune Light, I, I think, from a technical standpoint. So the only way is to make have their own shit, right? Where hey, it's not our shit, you can't log in, kind of thing. So I think I think that's ultimately what it comes down to, and and they'll probably stop it for a hot minute, you know, to yeah, kind of yeah. like keep keep things, and then they'll have time to research and battle like the next crazy hack. You know, to, uh, advancement, right? It's it's literally an arms race. There's no I mean, permanent fix. Right, so, and stuff. boys, how impactful and damaging would you say uh, that these clients are now in the game? Like, how often do you go up against people that are using these cheat clients? Um, it's it's got a lot better than it was at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, it would be every day you would fight. You'd fight probably like two, three of them. Um, it depends if you mean by cheat clients, as in like the AHKers. Um, a lot less now. I still probably, for me anyway, early GMT, but only probably a few times a month. Like, it's not that common at the moment. Okay. But it's like West Ham said earlier, it comes in waves. So, like, next month there might be loads, and then the content creators try to the J mods, and then they ban some. Uh, but even anything like clients, I don't even like some of the rune like things, like anti drag. Like, there's so many little ways to. It's not technically cheating, but, like, I, I much preferred it when anti drag wasn't a thing. Um, and there's all like the the freeze timers and all stuff like that. There's so many little advantages that clients give now that just kind of make it baby proof, um, which I'm not a massive fan of personally. But I can't see it ever changing because I I can't see Jagex just being like, yeah, we're not having Runelight anymore. Yeah, unless they make their the own, client, yeah. unless they make their own, pretty much. That's what I'm kind of getting at. Like, make it good enough that people are like, all right, okay, fine, or whatever. I can't use Runelight, but at least this is the same kind of thing. <laughs> That's Even like, their own has anti drag now, though. I think. I think Steam has anti drag. Holy um, shit! <laughs> Damn. It's, okay, they it's, really it's, are it's, trying it's to like make them relate. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. really are trying to make them relate. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, uh, a good sign. Yeah, as long as it stops like people from doing automated like client, right? Like, if if it does that, then that would be, you know, the pauses would certainly outweigh the you know the the quality of life stuff that they do for PvP, which you know they don't need to, but. But they need to sell it, right? They need to sell people into using their client, I guess. Because, yeah, you know, people don't want to lose room light. Mm-hmm. So. 
It needs now, to match it or be there, basically. Yeah, That's the only way. I will, I will say, though, um, I also don't run into a lot of AHKers, and usually you can tell, right, because they'll be really shitty, and all of a sudden they'll land the most perfect switch while sidestepping, and you're like, no, I can't even do that shit. You're not doing that shit. But how I see it is kind of like how account security has been so bad that if account security wasn't this gaping hole of ass, which is probably the worst way to put it, I'm sorry, um, we would probably have a lot more people playing the game. And that's how I see the wilderness is if nobody ever fought somebody that could like shift into a weird gear switching monster, they might still be out in the fucking wild, right? Just the thought of them being in the wild makes people not want to go in the wild is what I'm saying. It's it's like the damage has been done. The only way to fix that damage is is a straight up a hundred or at least ninety five percent fix on their on Jagex's part. Whatever they do, whatever it is, they need to do something and they make it very vocal. Right, because people to this day still think everyone's AHK and everyone's got a bulwark. You're not gonna get any kills in the wild. It's not fun, right? It's just no fun at all to be had. We need to change that conception and uh, really need to get in front of this. Even though I think it's probably too late, <laughs> but hopefully. I mean, it, it was one of my main concerns with the uh, PvP arena they're bringing out is that you know if they haven't addressed people using AHK clients and cheat clients, it's like you know you even can't have they, it anyways. Yeah, even if the incentive isn't there in terms of, like, GP per hour for these people to go there who cheat, it's like, at this point, it, there doesn't always need to be an incentive. Like, some people will just maliciously go there and, like, try and ruin other people's time. And um, I, I'm really hoping that's not the case, but it definitely is something that they need to address. Well, like, so, you know, cheat clients go beyond just, like, you know, for PvP purposes, right? Like, it, it's also, you know, a thing that... A, impacts every other aspect of the game too so it's one of those things that i feel like it's, it's a high priority on their list not just for the sake of pvp it's also on their bottom line i feel like so i think they it's something that they are actually looking to fix because like i don't i see them updating cl their client every month right like they have a lot of different stuff added onto it every month and i don't there's no and and, and, and even though not many people are using that client they're still doing it every month right usually Usually, if people aren't doing something or using something that they that they're offering, they would just stop doing it because it's like waste of money. But like, it's not stopping them, right? Like, I highly doubt many people are using Steam Client, but they still update it so much. It, and there must be something that they're noticing, like you know, that they're not saying. Obviously, they're probably working towards something. They they have to because yeah. like there's there's there has to be a justification. How do they just why do they just update it all the time when maybe one percent of the user base use it or something, right? Yeah, that's very true. That's and very and true. again, it's it's more than just PvP, man. Like, you know, PVM, skilling, like, all that stuff. That The clients can do a lot for you in every uh, aspect of the game. So so they must be looking into trying to find a way to, you know, stop these clients from, you know, wreaking havoc everywhere. So Yeah. I mean, hey, dude, yeah. I appreciate you backing up the PvP community there. Because you're right, it is. It does affect the whole game and you know, really they are yeah. they are crazy. Right, so, boys, we've been going now for two and a half hours. Is there anything else PvP-related that you boys would like to talk about? You, uh, no, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, it, it, it's always gets to this point where I'm like, I don't think so. And then as soon as we end, I'm like, oh, I should have said that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think we covered, uh, I mean, at least from what we wrote down, you know, we covered the polling system, difference between... <clears throat> You know, safe PvP and wilderness PvP, uh, like the you know their the J mods ideas on PvP, well, and critiquing it and stuff, and before, we cover extra on top. Before we do end, why don't we end it on? If you guys yeah. could add, remove, or change anything about PvP as it currently is, what would that thing be? You wanna go first, Gustav? I don't even know, to be honest. Like that, that's not as, e as easy of a question as Yo, it. I, I, I can start answer, something. Bro. I can start something really simple. That they just they, they can work on. They can start working on the ref thing. You know, just add that multi area. You know, with with some extra extra mobs, right? Like kind of similar how it used to be, and keep some of that single area. You know, entry fee done. I, I, that's what I would say. Just add that. That create the spark. You know, start something. Yeah. No, I, I'd agree. Multi revs. Um, I would personally eliminate LMS um, and revert <laughs> the PJ timer change. Mm. So, like, it's back to sort of 
there's no more singles plus basically so so i think the issue was is there was very like split like some people would be in the rev cage of singles plus some people would be in the wildy and nowhere was active because everywhere was like everyone was spread out um they should just take some of them options out simplify it go back to what it used to be and then sort of build from there um, okay you heard it here first. I know he just wants to team people with his 50 man stream again. Yeah, I was scared to say that because now people are just going to come on my Twitch. You're, like, You're the guy that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, Radio. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. I'd say just adding multi revs back would do tons. But um, I, 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 yeah, no, actually, I, I've got something. Delete PvP once. Uh, <laughs> that'd be good. There's yeah, no reason. Great. No reason. That's kind of a similar concept, I guess. Just simplify stuff, trying to put everyone back in one place to make stuff active. Yeah, right? you know, we used to talk about how, like, at, at the moment, we don't. there's not enough people to, like, spread it up like that. And I, I feel like there could be in the future, but right now it's not there. Yeah. yeah. Should, if the PA timer is going to stay the same, then what is the point of PvP Worlds existing with the exact same PJ timer, exact same loot mechanic system? It is quite literally just PK, but in a different location. That was yeah, my just, biggest bugbear yeah, yeah. with the PJ timer. It's just it just made it another PvP world. Like there's mm -hmm. no variety now. Like people could do that in PvP worlds before. Why do they have to make the worldy like that? Yeah, I mean yeah, PvP I worlds were were great back when the EP system was a thing. <laughs> and in terms of like, it wasn't ideal because it was the only kind of PK we had. But at the same time, it gave people a reason to like go places that you'd never go. Like I used to go PK in random spots. Like I'd go to like Red Chin Chompers up in the Faladip Hills and it, you just find people up there, you know? Like those were the good times for PvP, but now I'm guessing the worlds are like completely dead, right? And like mm -hmm. high riskers and that, yeah. What about yeah, you, Mike? All you, all you really find in random like PvP worlds are like the PvP hardcores, but the chances of actually finding, they are the engineers series and a few people try it. But as far as, far as actually finding random people in PvP worlds now, it's nowhere like nothing like it used to be. Yeah, yeah. other than loring probably. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do people I, do, yeah. Sorry, do people still lure in PvP worlds, or is it just not oh, active uh, enough? Definitely, oh, definitely, for sure. Yeah, definitely. That's it's the activity. The that is the activity. It's just I mean, that's the I mean, purpose of any people. Are we talking like, are we talking multi, like multi lures? Because that's kind of sick if so, but if we're talking about like logging in underneath somebody, it's a bit weak. Nah, nah. They, there's just all sorts of shit. Usually it it's, is. um, they're just camp certain areas and wait for people to forget they're on a PvP world. But yeah, there's all, some crazy all ones. Those kind of lures. Oh, no, there, yeah, there's a lot of crazy ones where like they'll friend you on Discord for a week or two, and then they'll mm -hmm. be like, "Oh, let's try to anti lord this guy," and then they'll Bur tell you to go there, and then boom, you <laughs> yeah. lose your team. So, we're talking you know, about happens, like the bro. psychopath you know stuff. I mean? Yeah, dude, so many people tell me like the same exact scenario, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, dude. It, it, I was I so I had a very like it's sort crazy. of naive imagination then of a pk or being lured somewhere being greedy going into moi i wasn't thinking along the lines of poor guys no, getting lured it, for tebos and stuff yeah that's crazy there is this stuff like that uh, at the grand exchange there's one you're fighting someone and they misclick on well they don't misclick but they make it like they misclick on the tunnel um so then you go and follow them through and then they spear uh, you in and you're going to moi. Um, yeah. there's still stuff like that goes on yep it's advanced dude it's um crazy. but to, to end off the podcast i was gonna say you know Definitely take away the bulwark, right? I think everyone understands my thought process on the bulwark. Uh, or, or obviously multi-revs, but just uh, spice it up a little bit. If you guys play other MMOs, there's a game, I can't remember what it's called, but there's merchants, there's hunters, and there's thieves. And you have this route that you would take, and you'd have to hire someone to protect you, right? And you take oh, that merchant and you protect them. Maybe, yeah, like a caravan. It would just be full of loot. So maybe like a mini-game with no NPCs, I don't know how it would work, but you, you would be able to protect somebody in the wild, moving across the wild, and you'd have thieves or PKers that would come and try to take that bounty, right? If you made it across, you'd get more loot. If they killed you, they got all your shit, right? Just something something new. If I didn't have to say anything basic for the wild, just something new that yeah. would get people excited and make money, and it's, and it's simple. That's the biggest thing. It's got to be simple. I swear, most updates that we see, uh, especially that bounty hunter update where they try to add the hot zones. Oh, God. What? That was so damn confusing that only the smartest people abused it. You know what I mean? Like, they oh need it God. simple. Is what I was I'm there. Talking. I yeah. did a little bit of that because all my friends were like, yeah, dude, it's so easy to just, you know, alt their shit and whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. it was really yeah. dumb. Yeah. 
Right, boys. Yeah. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure having you both on. Thank you very much for your time. Um, what are your social medias, boys? Where can the people find you? You first, Dino. West, West oh, okay, okay. He's going. <laughs> I was waiting. I was like, he's going to go. He's going to go first. Is that? Um, bro, is it bad? I don't know. I uh, know my main thing <laughs> is Twitch. It will be Twitch Dino underscore XX because Dino wasn't available and the three X's was something else that I didn't want to be associated with. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's, that's his other account. <laughs> so I get that a lot. It's like, I didn't realize at the time I had to change my name. It was, uh, yeah. Mr. West. Right, it'll be in the description. In oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot. Uh, Twitch.tv slash West Ham, YouTube.com slash West Ham OSRS, Twitter.com slash West Ham RS2, OnlyFans.com slash West Ham. Oh, everything in the description. Yeah, yeah, boys, go and check them out. At the end of the video.